Shout out to everybody out there. This is Cap, episode 32. That's right. I go by sound. Welcome to the CA channel, CA podcast. Another week of topics and everything happening in Providence, Rhode Island. We have the Cap crew, the Chub Corner, the producers, Marloon and Erlen doing their things per usual. On, you know what I'm saying? Well. Another week of Welcome. podcasting um, for the CA crew. But this week is a special episode. We're going to have the full interview. If you want to skip ahead and watch the full interview with Quidi Pay, the NFL player out of Providence, Rhode Island, our city, our state. His story, he broke it down. It was very dope. A lot of, a lot of very, it, it was inspirational. So definitely make sure to check that out if you're watching this episode this week. And if you're here for that specifically, you're welcome to skip ahead. But if you want to stay tuned real quick, we're going to break down some of the weekly topics that we discuss, the most important things happening in the city and also in this culture. So let's start off from the top with Providence, Rhode Island. Um, for those who don't know, it's going to be one of the main tourist destinations in a couple years. I'm calling it now because on the same fucking date we had <laughs> Zendaya. Yes, Zendaya from Euphoria. Um, and the Puerto Rican princess herself. Welcome to Vegas, baby. Give me some money, baby. <laughs> Jocelyn Hernandez in the fucking city. Um, Jocelyn did a walkthrough in a nightclub, a lit lounge in Broad Street. Um, but Zendaya was filming... Some people are saying a movie. There's a movie that she's filming right now currently in Boston. There's keeps popping up TikToks and stuff of her with Tom Holland in Boston. I think it's called Challengers. But then there's also a commercial for Smart Water that they're saying that she might have been just filming the commercial out here in Providence, Rhode Island. But I wish you would have let us know, Zendaya, that you were coming to the city, coming to Providence, Rhode Island. We would have definitely been there. You know, a lot of people hitting me up. Yo, I didn't know. I would have left my job. <laughs> my heart's broken. I'm on vacation. That's me. I'm sorry. I didn't really know. No one knew. Hurting. It was a surprise, but hey, next time let us know because we love you. She's basically the hottest female actress right now, one of the hottest actresses, actors in the scene right now. Euphoria, Malcolm Marie, um, Dune, plenty of films. Uh, shout out to Zendaya for coming through, showing love to Providence, Rhode Island. Come back again. You know, I know you're dating Tom Holland, but you guys can maybe, when you elope, get married, have a honeymoon here, something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We miss her presence already. It's, it's, that's, that was crazy. <coughs> also, Jocelyn Hernandez doing her thing. I wanted to go see her, but it was $85 fucking dollars. I'm Dang. not going to pay $85 fucking dollars to see Jocelyn Hernandez. But I want to see Jocelyn Hernandez. Don't get me wrong. But $85? It's kind of crazy. Damn. I think that's like Drake prices. $85? That's, that's like Drake. <laughs> I don't think Drake is that cheap, bro. Yeah. The general release, like maybe for the bleachers, that's Drake. Know. You might be a mile away from the stage. You're still around yeah. Drake. Jocelyn Hernandez, not Drake. I'm sorry, but I do. I, I, I welcome to Vegas, baby. Give me. I want to ride. I want to ride. You know, I know all her hits, but shit, man. I don't know about that. You know, that was a lot of money, but hey, they sold out. It seems yeah, like I've it was seen, packed. I've I saw seen the a line. Lot of videos is like the videos were there. Were bumping, yeah, people were jumping. Nah, didn't get the call. He was supposed to DJ that night. He was supposed to DJ that night. They said fuck him. I said damn. Why not? Yeah. He was supposed to DJ that night, that whole night, but um, they didn't want to focus. <laughs> they they charge me eighty five, seventy five. They tried to charge him a uh, yeah. discount, ten bucks yeah. only. Damn, yeah. that's yeah. fucked yeah. up. He was supposed to be the DJ. Now he didn't get no fucking DJ, but <laughs> she dressed wild, Louis Vuitton, everything, head to toe. Like, listen, Jocelyn, do your thing, but next time you come in town, make it more fucking affordable. I, this is that <laughs> shit was fucking crazy, bro. I was like, fuck, I, I almost paid the money, but I was like, no. I, I want to take my whole family. My whole family loves Jocelyn Hernandez, the Puerto Rican princess, but $85 is not it, chief. Sorry. Um, but also in Rhode Island news, locally, important news, the Tuskegee Airmen, the African-American pilots that fought in World War II, we had the last of them that's from Rhode Island, the Rhode Island one, his birthday, Victor Butler, his birthday passed last week. He turned 100 years old, and this man is a legend. He got sent... Thousands of cards in the mail, like, flooded because people were celebrating him because he's the last Tuskegee Airman, Rhode Island. And the fact that he's turned 100 years old, he's still alive. So people were sending him gift cards, a bunch of stuff, bro. Crazy, like, that's, a, that's amazing a story, bro. The video was very emotional. And then we have the New England Patriots showing love. Robert Kraft came into Providence, Rhode Island, showed love to Victor Butler, the Tuskegee Airman. So just blessings to that and if you guys are not familiar with that story make sure to look it up i think it's very interesting and the fact that happened here in providence rhode island it's, it's beautiful to see north providence to be specific um but that's it for when it comes to local news next week we'll keep you guys updated 
One of the main topics of the week we're going to discuss before getting into an interview is the monkeypox situation, which kind of correlates with locally because when it comes to local shit, wash your fucking hands. Um, I was at the fucking gym today washing my fucking hands because I don't want this shit to hit here. I think it started, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, nearby the first case in the country was in Boston. It was in Mass, yeah. Very close. That's 30 know. minutes from here. Yeah, I yeah. don't know I don't know what you Mass people doing up there. Oh, my um, God. Yeah. Seems no, like no, supposedly the, the, the things was talking about, he went to Canada or some shit like that. It was like a Canada trip. Or am I tripping? Did I read some different shit? I think I read some shit was like it was a Canada trip or something like that. The person came back. Yeah. Uh. Um, keep that shit away from me. You know, uh, yeah, you, Mass, you can stay over Massachusetts there. visitors don't come here. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. boys there, from Mass, no, no, don't DM me. For you. There's nothing yeah, out here. That there's you, no, you don't come to Rhode Island. Yeah. Cut that shit out. I know out. you want to come to the beaches and shit like that. So I no. Y'all have some over there, too. Uh, you guys want Providence pussies? Cut it out. <laughs> Go take, to fucking Dartmouth. Take it, take it. Take it. Fall take River. It. Go to Fall River. <laughs> Go to Fall River. <laughs> don't come to Providence with the monkeypox. And breaking news as of today, um, <laughs> who, a.k.a. WHO, the World Health Organization has announced an advisor traced the monkeypox outbreak back to European raves where gay men were intimate, and it looks like sexual content uh, contact has now amplified the transmission of this disease. So now this is breaking news, and people are going crazy. And they're not kind of trying to call it a gay disease, but they're just saying that this is specifically traced back to that, which is kind of weird because it's like very nostalgic to the AIDS. HIV, that whole situation, and they traced it back to that or alluded to that. And to this day, a lot of gay people are being, you know, misconceived and judged because of that. Recently, we had the controversy with the baby where he was like, you know, talking about getting head in the parking lot and then talking about you know, dirty AIDS and this and that and kind of making a connection with them. And it's like, hold up, bro. That's homophobic. Calm down. Like, do your rap shit, but calm the fuck down with the homophobia. And now I feel like this is just going to amplify it because it's like, yeah. what the fuck? We already hate it because it's scary. Monkey pox is like those images, bro. They make my skin crawl like that shit is like really nasty. It looks like acne, but not really. Oh, oh it's crazy. And it's like the fact that you can possibly get that. I haven't even looked up if it's deadly. I don't want to look that up because like, I don't want to get scared more. I don't think it is. I don't, I don't know. Why. But now they want to connect it to the gay. It's like, whoa. It's now. Specific. Yeah. It's like, I don't even have nothing against gays, but now it's like, is it, can we even joke about this now? Can we, you can't even make it no gay jokes, I guess, because people are going to get offended. But it's like, you're, if if I was stand-up comedian now, you definitely got plenty of content now to make about the fucking the monkey pox situation. But, man, I hope they do their research more because this is just going to get blown out of proportion. Like, why even announce that? I guess maybe they have to because it was like they're tracing it down where it came from because this is going to go viral. It's already viral, but now... If this happens, where it's going to be a pandemic part two, it's going to be worse. Because even if it's deadly or not, it's visible. COVID was invisible. You just heard a cough. People got the lung uh, issues, breathing. But monkeypox? The name alone sounds crazy. Yeah. It, it reminds you of uh, chickenpox, you know? And it's like, why call it monkeypox? Does it come from monkeys? Can we not pet monkeys no more? I was petting a monkey at the zoo. What was that zoo? Southwick Zoo. Uh, two months ago. You gonna tell us now? Damn. You gonna tell us now? And he—that's the place of oh. origin too. And it, damn, it was not Boston. Boston. <laughs> I was petting a Boston monkey. Damn. How many times have we dapped up this motherfucker damn. ever since, bro? But it. Damn. Mm, um, nothing. But I think the monkey. <laughs> I don't think the monkey was gay, so we could be good. <laughs> we might be good. I don't think it was a gay monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know because I don't know monkey sexes, but. I didn't see no rainbow, no flag around him. I don't know. This sucks for the gay community, man. They're gonna they're gonna really exploit this You're shit. You're fucking canceled, bro. <laughs> bro, they gotta cancel me. Fuck, it's a joke. Oh my um, god. Um, we gotta have some fun with this because this is very scary. I'm scared for my life, so let me laugh while I still can. Because next week I might have bumps all over my fucking body, and it's gonna be sad news. God forbid. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, forbid. God forbid. God forbid. But this is happening live, guys. Uh, comment up below. How do you guys feel about the monkeypox? Have you seen it? Do you know someone that has it? How do you feel about it? Share your opinion. Kanye West has come out um, from his hiding. He was supposedly, they're saying, on the island. We don't know. But now he's seen, pictured at the Balenciaga fashion show over the weekend. But aside from that, he's back on Instagram, made his first post back. And he showed a picture of the 
McDonald's. I feel it looks like a McDonald's. Uh, I'm actually trying to. I'm gonna pull it up. Actually, let me send it to myself to pull it up on the TV. That way, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it behind me. But it's like a McDonald's packaging. But I'm not sure if it's an actual McDonald's hamburger squished or if it's a box for McDonald's. Obviously, I'm gonna trust Kanye when it comes to artistic direction. So by default, we're gonna say it's dope, or it might obviously be dope because he does a lot of dope shit. He doesn't really miss. But it's just confusing to like, what is this, right? He says, yay, teams up. He's speaking in third person with legendary Muji industrial designer Nato Fuka Sawa to reimagine McDonald's packaging. It looks, it looks what do you guys like, feel? What's looks, your opinion? It looks like a 2D sandwich, right? So it's just, it's just like a square hamburger. Yeah, I was gonna say, is the hamburger still round or are they trying to like change the whole? Aesthetic I don't know. Of a hamburger. I, f- I find this shit so crazy. The fact that we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're really fucking was, talking about this. What he's he's back, and this like, is what this is what he first does. Very left. He loves McDonald's, though. He always mentioned that celebrities always eat McDonald's no matter what. But it's like it's strange to me. I might eat the box. He might be getting a bag for this. Pun intended, because I guess this is not a bag. It's a new version of a bag, because the packaging. I don't know. This is all we have for now. Kanye's back. I, I, as long as he's healthy, he's alive. It's good to see him in, I guess, good spirits. It seems to be third person. Maybe he's not running his Instagram. Someone's running it for him because I, I doubt he posted this by himself. Like, if he's speaking in third person, then he definitely needs some help. I doubt he's. I don't think he's that egotistical yet. Um, who knows? He's Kanye West. But, yeah, I'm not going to... I don't know. Is this going to be resellable? Is this going to be... Uh, uh, was that the Travis Scott, J Balvin, uh, collaboration with McDonald's part two or part five now with Kanye? I have no idea, but it exists and is real, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you feel. But yeah, comment down below. How do you guys feel about that? Kanye West is back and working with McDonald's. Breaking news as of today, Gunna has been denied bond on the Rico case. This is the second time to denied his bond, but now they've extended the trial date for January 9th, 2023. They're saying that he is a YSL commander. Mm. So they are worried about his tampering with the witnesses if he was to be free. So they don't want to give him bond. And he has to basically stay in jail, correct me if I'm wrong, until January. So this man is not going to even fucking, fucking have Christmas with his family. Nothing. I don't know how to feel about this because it's like we spoke about it last week with Wongo. And speaking of Wongo, so that episode, you know... Interesting takes. I don't agree with all of Wongo's takes, especially with the cancel culture. I don't agree with his take on cancel culture. A lot of people were going at him in the comments. I saw that. That shit was crazy, but it's unique, you know, to each their own. With his take when it came to this specifically, I understood it, but I also feel the compassion for this man, especially probably because I just know people, have friends who've been through the jail system, locked up, died. So I probably come from more of a biased perspective. But it's just sad, like, but then again, do they probably have enough evidence where this these guys might be criminals? Like, we might be here pushing P, dancing, and these guys might be pushing C. They're pushing criminal activity, pushing CA. I thought we were CA. They're pushing the real CA. They're pushing the criminal activity to their hoods, maybe fucking up their communities. I don't know the facts, but it's interesting. And the fact that he got denied bond again? A commander. I don't think this man is a commander. He doesn't give me commander vibes. You know what I'm saying? If I if I see Gunna, I don't know if he's commanding much. But it's like I don't I don't know. Is is strange? Very specific. I feel like he, he might be a commander. People like to dick ride him. He was. I feel like I feel like make some calls. I feel like if Gunna tells you something, you might do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if Gunna says something, a song, 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 I don't know. I wouldn't you know, really do it, man. Yeah, you literally pushing peace. Yeah, but horrible I don't. fucking song. Yeah, this is I don't know, man. man. He's not that intimidating to me. Yeah, I don't he know. might be once he has an AR on him. <sighs> I'm playing. I can't see him doing that shit either. Shit. I mean, I, I think Commander. they're looking at it as like the money is what makes you. Well, I mean, you don't gotta get his hands dirty to be a commander. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and like the money is was it gives him his power. So like, just so making moves. That yeah. pussy got power. You know? Man, one of the best albums this year. Still, gonna and I don't know. You don't think so? No. You didn't like that album? No. I love that album, man. I only got a couple of songs. Well, I think the second highest selling, one of the highest sellings this year. But aside from that, 
Man, that album. I don't think it's his best, but it's up there. Um, one of was better than me. We, that, we it's, yeah. it's not an album of the year. Not in my eyes. I think so. And if if you motherfuckers gonna eat me alive in the comments, do it. Eat them. Suck. Eat them with some with some salt and some dick. Dick. Um, salty dick. No, nah, but honestly, I don't think so. I'm just keeping a buck. Anyways, um, is he a commander? Is he a commander? Comment down below, guys. You know this is this is they crazy. Gave, they gave Young Thug his bail, right? Uh, no, not yet. They're still waiting on that situation too. That that's he's next. But if you think about it, if they give Thug bail and not gonna, it wouldn't make sense. That's yeah, weird. that makes no sense. Man, God bless these people. I hope you know. Oh man, I don't know what to even say. I I don't even want to. I don't know what to say. This is unbelievable. Drake has responded back to Pusha T's Drink Champs interview. Basically, Pusha T did an interview with Noriega and DJ EFN on Drink Champs where he discussed the fact that he is banned from Canada. They've tried to go to Canada, and they've been banned ever since the beef has abrued during the Adonis, the Adidas campaign, you're hiding a child, that whole situation, right? And we haven't heard from Drake since the interview until now. Chubbs, uh, according to academics, the five-star general, OVO's five-star general, Chubbs, mm. Um, we know Chubbs. If you guys don't know Chubbs, you don't know Drake. And if you don't know Drake, I'm sorry. Chubbs, um, said he posted a photo with Drake and it said, we don't ban niggas. We welcome them with open arms, evil emoji, cross finger emoji. And then Drake commented on it. Laughing emoji. Come on over. So it's like, oh, they're obviously talking about the Pusha T situation without saying Pusha T's name. Yeah. Cause, uh, Pusha T is the one that got banned from the Canada. And I'm looking at it this at this both ways, where it's like Drake is that guy to Come have on. pull and power to fucking tell a whole country to literally ban a man from a country. And it's like if you are someone, it would be Drake. Because I love Justin Bieber. He's Canadian, right? Jim Carrey. But Drake, he's Mr. Six. Who was it? Gucci Man that said that because of Drake, he was able to go into Canada yeah, too. Yes, so. like he had help. Yeah. Yeah. He's that guy that people call. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's in with the prime minister or whatever Canada has. Don't they have like a prime minister? I don't think they have a president. Um, Justin Trudeau, but he's an yeah. asshole. So I don't think I don't want to connect Drake to him. Fuck Trudeau. But um, in general, shout out to the Canadians. They tend to be very nice people, right? But this man Drake is showing you that they are also not to be played with. So now, how will Pusha T respond? I don't think he will respond. The album dropped. I love the album. I think it's people, album of the year. People seeing it as a negative. The fact that he got banned? No, no, the the, the response. That response. Yeah. I guess yeah, because he's laughing back at him, like "come on over." But I don't think he means literally, like unless he did, unless they Why dropped not? the ban. Well, because when when Pusha T did his interview, like it didn't seem like he had any malice. Any, yeah, any hate. Because you anything. think so? You think oh, so? Because they're they're alluding to not conf- to like oh, we didn't ban him. But I think they're being uh, sarcastic. Sarcastic. But maybe they're not. Maybe because if they didn't ban him, who the fuck banned him? Well, he made up with Kanye, so we know that Drake. He might just drop the ban. He might just be like, "Yo, fuck it!" Like, y'all, y'all think this is it like this? It's kind of a late response. So that interview was like last month. Uh, I mean, it still spices up. Like, it helps push a T a lot because it's like, all right, probably gonna help his his sales back again. But it could just be that Drake just lay with it. Drake's yeah. late with it because he didn't keep so up like, with fuck it. it I'll fuck up be playing too much. They have some Steve time to staking. think. Yeah, they have some time to think. Like, yo, should we reply? How should we reply to this? That's interesting. Comment below. How do you guys feel? Because I don't know. I don't feel like it was. Yeah, least, I don't feel like Push's response to like the shit was like with some bad intentions. And who banned him? Um, and someone banned him? Maybe Jim Chubbs. Carrey? Maybe Chubbs. Chubbs? Chubbs. Chubbs. <laughs> the Chubbs, five is, Chubbs is faking it. Chubb, stop capping, bruv. He's, he's he's border patrol. Do you guys want me to turn on my Canadian accent, bruv? Stop, stop capping, bruv. You might be can't. Uh, no, not cancel. You you. I'm from the sick side, man. No. Drake said you can't <laughs> go. You, know, over you there can't there go no more. more. You can't go no more. Drake I'm a Nelk boy. Maybe the Nelk boys banned <laughs> Pusha. They got pool in Canada. They're Canadian. I don't know. It's, it's crazy, but um, we're not banned, so we'll see you soon one of these days, oh, Canada. Yeah, you yeah. might be now. Oh damn, you're right. Fuck. Damn hey. it, man. <laughs> Last topic of the day before we get into the interview with Quiddy Pay. This right here, controversial, Kendrick Lamar, his first week sales. They first came out online by academics, right? But I had a feeling something was kind of off. They said 286,000 copies. So people were like, damn, this is low, uh, pun intended, damn, 
the album. This is lower than all his albums since Good Kid Mad City. Also, this is lower than J. Cole by like 2,000 copies. Because J. Cole, I think, did 288 with uh, the off season. So people were like, what the fuck? Is this a flop? What is going on? There's a lot of YouTube videos popping up. Kendrick Lamar flopped? Question mark. Clickbait. It works because I had that tweet too. Or I question it. Is this a flop? And a lot of people are like kind of dick riding him to the point like, yo, you shouldn't even question it because it's Kendrick Lamar. But it's like, yo, slow your fucking roll. Calm the fuck down. People are just going to have discussions without even calling it a flop is up in the air. This is his lowest selling album since his first album, a decade. It's a decade in. And this has been, what, five years? Since we waited for a new album, the projections, remember we talked about it before the album came out a month ago. Bless you, Marlon. They said that it was going to be 350,000 copies to 400,000 copies. And it's like, why the fuck are they projecting an album that has no singles? This has never happened. Why are you projecting? There's no pre-order. Why are you projecting? How does this happen, right? Because it's Kendrick. And then it's because it's Kendrick. And then they have the high set standards. And then when the album drops and it's not 350, now it's looking shaky. Like, wait a minute, why were these the projections and we got this? And then the physicals didn't drop. A lot of people are saying that, but it's like, oh, does that really matter? I don't know. But the physicals did drop. A couple of days ago, before the full week estimations dropped, the physicals had came out during the week last week. But it's like online, some bundles, some merch, poopy merch in my opinion, very poopy merch, simple, plain. It's like, I get it, but it's like, why do merch if you're going to do simple shit? It's whatever. Um, But it's like, damn, there's no in-store physicals. It's online. So there's no back. We don't see if it's like a pamphlet. How does it look? There's no track list photo. It's just a front cover. So maybe that helped the sales. But now the sales have come out officially 295,000. So 5,000 below 300,000 for the week. So this is the highest, I think, album this year selling wise, um, especially first week. And it's his fourth number one. It's the number one album in the country. His fourth number one ever. Um, so all four of his main albums are number one. So that's dope. Obviously, it's Kendrick Lamar. He's going to go number one. And back again is still his lowest album in 10 years. So now the questions are there. People are drawing lines, connecting dots. What is going on? In my opinion, this is how I look at it. I'm going to have a quick take. When it comes to streaming, this is how streaming works. People do not understand. Back in the day, people would buy albums. So you go buy an album, and that would count as an album sale. You buy an album, that's how people would go platinum. A million copies in the first week because a million people went to buy that album. Doesn't mean a million people listen to that album. You could have replayed that album a thousand times. Now we're in a streaming era where people stream albums. So every time someone listens to the album, it gets taken into account. But you got to stream one song 15 times for it to count as one song purchase. And you got to stream an album basically, I think, 150 times for it to be a full purchase of an album on average. So this is now skewed with people's perceptions of albums and actual releases, where you see someone's first week sales. Corey LaRae, for example, 10K first week sales, 10K albums. Doesn't mean 10K people went and listened to this album. Millions of people. Because we're talking about streams. There's millions of streams. But the perception is going to make it look like it's a flop. What is really going on, right? I think this album, Kendrick's, can be a flop if you're looking at it where it's like the projections were high. So when people go to listen to it, the streaming numbers are going to reflect, okay, you listen to it once, oh, uh, you didn't listen to it again. How a lot of people feel about this album. It's not really replayable, not a lot of replay value yeah. on purpose because he didn't want that. But it's going to suffer, quote unquote suffer, because obviously for him it's not suffering. Can't please everybody. He don't give a fuck. But a lot of people doing business when it comes to music. So he's not going to get high streams because they're not going to hit that second replay. So the projections are going to be high, but it's going to be hit. No, it's going to be missed. No, hit it's going to be hit or miss. It's going to be missed completely because once you get the product, now if it's replayable, you're going to get high first week, high second week. It's happening with Lil Durk's album, happening with Drake's album, it's happening right now with Future's album where people replay it. And now it happened with Kendrick's old albums. Yeah. Good Kid, Mad City sold 10, uh, no, 20K or 22K last week when his new album came out. But it's also indicative of maybe this album's not that good to the point that people go back and listen to the old shit. Or he's just a generational artist where he drops. You're going to listen to his old shit. But I think people have the perception fucked up with streaming and sales. And I also think that streaming needs to be represented first week. Everyone needs to report first week streaming sales rather than first week streaming 
No, no, no. People need to... Re- uh, I got a tongue twister. People need to uh, report first week streaming numbers rather than first week album sales because nobody's out here buying an album. And even if people are buying albums, it's not us. When's the last time you bought an album? Yeah, no. Nah, unless... When's the last time you bought an album? Bought an album, whether digitally or physically. Like adding it to to your I've never, iTunes. I've never bought an album. That's not buying it, right? Like pressing the no. Plus that's sign adding to your library. That's streaming. Sorry, I haven't I've bought one. I've never bought an album. And then people want to debate me online, and I get it because if you look at the statistics, yes, there's like ten percent of people who still buy albums, and it's still in the millions because so much music is streamed and listened to throughout the year that that small percentage, if you look take into account the whole world, is millions of people still. But if you go around ask people. It's not this generation buying albums. It's maybe older people, different genres, rock, raw fucking country, probably buying albums. Nobody in my generation in hip hop is out here buying albums. Kendrick didn't even drop physicals and he still did high numbers. And people are trying to say, oh, if he dropped physicals, his numbers numbers would have been higher. I don't think that doesn't and it doesn't really matter because people just want to listen to the music. And at the same time, it sucks because this is all fabricated. What the fuck is a stream? Why does it take 15 Fucking streams to count for one. Who made that determination? Imagine if it was that one stream was one sale. Which it should be. Oh, my God. I mean, technically. The whole game yeah. would be platinum. But then you have this where it's like you get the big dogs get differentiated from the little boys, you know, because of these numbers and shit now. But at the same time, people care about streaming for the whole year. Because at the end of the year, that was with the spot, uh, Spotify wrap up. A million streams. A billion streams. Drake always wins. Bad Bunny passed Drake, I think, now. So it's like Drake and Bad Bunny top two. But it's like, I think that's is more representative. If we want to move into the streaming era, let's move into the streaming era. Let's stop focusing on first week album sales. Let's look at first week streaming numbers because that's what matters. That's if we want to talk about streams because think about it. Who's no one's buying albums? Yes, people are literally buying albums. But not to the point, it's not the majority. If we want to steer towards a majority, let's represent the majority. A lot of people think I'm, I'm caping for Kendrick. I'm not even caping for Kendrick because you'll still see that his streaming numbers are lower than whoever you compare him to. It's just not going to be like this fucking one week fucking album sale shit. You're going to see his streaming numbers because the first day he broke, I think Spotify streaming uh, records for that first day drop. So if he broke that and then his numbers come out and it kind of don't match up is because we're representing the wrong numbers. Now, if you drop the streaming numbers, it could be more relatable and it makes more sense because people are streaming albums. Now, if you're doing album sales, I, have, I haven't bought an album in years. Yes, I might buy vinyl to collect. I bought the Tyler Creator vinyl. Call me if you get lost. I think I bought the weekend vinyl, but it sold out. So I think they just sent me the CD for free. So things like that. And is it collectible? And if you love someone, maybe. But it's not necessary. Yeah. Kanye dropped the whole album on a stem player. And it's like, I think he's still dropping an album. Down the two's coming. I don't think this is necessarily Kendrick flopping. I don't think it's his fall off. I don't think so. But then some people are like, are we moving the goalposts for Kendrick? Because if Drake did these numbers, people are going to talk shit. Because Kendrick's last album, damn, did like 600,000. He did like Drake type numbers, like Kendrick, num- like how you kind of want, if you think about Kendrick, he's a top dog, right? And he can say he doesn't care, but smoking on top fives. He's trying. All these other people are fucking selling. All selling you, bro. If you want to be top five, I think you have to take that into account somewhat. And J Cole proves it every time without a feature, without producers. He does it. He does high ass numbers. Like it's crazy. The album. How do you guys feel about it? A week later. I think it's his worst album. Like I said. Not necessarily as a bad album. I think it's a great album for what it is. I I still think it's his worst album. Like yeah. it's not really replayable. Rich <laughs> Rich Spirit, my shit. I play that shit like every day. I love yeah. that song, but that's pretty much it. No, I mean yeah, like the concept behind the album was a therapy session. You know, now that we got to see more people talk about it and get more in depth view, like, I understand it. But like you said, it's not replay value. It's not. I'm not really going back to that song to hear that same thing again. Like, yeah. I just, like, I understand it, but it's, it, I just can't, like, damn, had, like, DNA, stuff like that, Humble, like, so, you know. Classic records. Stuff that you can go back to and really bump. But Classic records. This one you felt it at first. You're like, all right, I understand you, but yeah, can it, I keep it's, going? It's not like a party album or none of that shit. It's more of, like, 
you're in a mood type shit, reflecting type thing. You want to go deep into your own mind type shit, you know, uh, and do all of that. I I play maybe like two songs off of it, Rich Spirit and then um, Savior. Call Me Out. Call Me Out is good, yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's probably it. I don't play that often. Bad Bunny got me on a fucking chokehold. <laughs> that's what I've been listening to fucking since that shit dropped. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like people are just questioning, like, Kendrick and all of that shit because of his number sales. I find that shit corny. I find that shit to be so fucking stupid. Because yeah. it's like, at the end of the day, if you're a fan or whatever the fuck it is, it's like, it's okay if you don't like his music. Don't mean you're not a fan anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, like you said, he can't please any, everybody. And plus... A lot of the times, man, especially with Kendrick, he might just be dropping this shit for himself. I'm tired of people thinking it's like, oh, they're dropping this shit for us. For and maybe they yeah. are in some cases and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, some cases you could but tell. But it's like, but it's like they're human beings too, so it's like they can drop whatever the fuck they want. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They're just trying to get that message out, however the fuck they feel and shit. Yeah. And now you're over here dogging him. He's like, oh, Kendrick fell off. He's like, fuck that. But we know what the fuck he's capable of. So it's like, I don't see what this questioning is all about and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If he wanted to, he can eat up anybody in the fucking game. Yes. Yeah, and, and and this is this is just facts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's I'm not just saying this because I'm a fucking Kendrick fan and shit. It's just that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like me, for example, like I didn't like Scorpion or fucking Drake. I don't mean I'm like oh Drake fell off. Fuck yeah. Drake. You know what I'm saying? People mm -hmm. like people switch up so fucking fast, bro. It's crazy. That was a double album too, no? Yeah. Yeah. Had the A and B. Yeah, A and B. Now Kendrick dropping, it kind of feels like no one else is dropping, and like we don't care about no one the else only dropping. The other person that we could care about dropping is Drake. Yeah. yeah nice. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about this morning on uh, Nicki, too, because Nicki was heating up to like drop an album, but I don't know. She's not really dropping the album. I don't know what's going on. But Drake I, is like the only really. If, if you think about it, the only albums you really want to expect and shit like that are OGs. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's if, just OGs. Because you know, we like, know what they're capable of. Yeah. I mean, if you know, like, low-key stuff, too. Like, Joey Badass, I know, is dropping too. Joey Badass. Brent Fayez is coming soon. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. It's people that you know that is really just capable yeah. of this shit. Yeah. But the big dogs already have come flooded out, it. Yeah. Unless Drake again and Cole again come, right? But then it would be yearly. And they don't really do yearly. They do maybe two years. So, we might get them next year. Mm. I don't know. It's interesting. Comment up below. How do you guys feel about Kendrick? Did he fall off? Has he fallen off? Share your opinion. I don't think he has, but I guess at nah. the end of the day, it is an opinion, so people nah. are going to feel however they're going to feel. Um, smoking on top five. Stop playing, I'm that guy. Is he not that guy? Is Kendrick not that guy? Did that five-year wait hit him a little bit on the legacy? And Kendrick yeah. fans, relax also. Yeah. Because people can have their opinions. We're talking. You guys are going to kill in the comments. You, your, br your brain level capacity wasn't as, as high as his. And you, okay. this is just as went flew, flew over your heads. Listen, if I wanted to read a book, I would have read a book. <laughs> this is music. I can feel however the fuck I want. It's art. Relax. Yeah. It Jesus. Told Listen, I, they told I, me I, I don't understand art. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Be, that be, guy, be, that be, guy, the guy, those be, guys in the corner don't understand the art. Like my yeah. dick. What the uh, fuck? Be, being a fucking fan doesn't mean you got a dick ride. Yeah, yeah, bro. Don't dick ride. Damn. If something ain't that good, then it's not that good. Yeah. That's it. You know, and you're entitled to your own fucking opinion. So, okay, you want to say we're smoking fucking dicks? All right, fuck it. But that don't mean... Stop dick riding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, stop fucking sure. dick riding. Yeah. No, no one's perfect, so... Like, That's how it is. And you're not going to please everybody. It's like us saying, it's like, oh, this is the best fucking podcast, and, and, and who gives a fuck what anybody says? Even you though might, it's true. You, you feel not, like that. Yeah, we definitely feel <laughs> that way. Yeah. You might not think it. You might not think it, and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, fuck it. Like, Go watch just, Teletubbies, bitch. Yeah, bro. You like Teletubbies more? Go watch Teletubbies, bitch. Tell, I don't give a fuck. Teletubbies are mad big, bro. Go watch Teletubbies. She's like that. Like, hop off Kendrick's penis and now enjoy this interview. Legendary interview with NFL player based out of Providence, Rhode Island, and changing his family's life. And appreciate you guys turning, tuning in. Um, Cap, you know, stop playing. I'm that guy. My ambition. Woo! How's everybody going today? Back on the CA podcast, a Say very how everybody's going. <laughs> how are, how everybody, how's everybody doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm nervous. We gotta we gotta you know a star in the building. You know we gotta we gotta we gotta humble ourselves, man. This is this man. Listen, first of all, welcome back to the podcast. If you're here, this is a special episode. I'm gonna add this episode on into the future. I pre-recorded this because it's timeless. This could be recorded 
10 years earlier, 10 years from now, and it's still going to be a timeless piece of content right here, a special moment. But for those who don't know, our producers are not here today. Shout out to Erlen and Marloon. I couldn't schedule them in today, but we do have Edwin in the building Hello, doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Graphic designer extraordinaire per usual. But let's get right to it, man. Shout out to Providence tapping in. Thousands of people listening and watching every week. And shout out to everybody on YouTube. And I guess shout out to the new fans because I'm pretty sure this is not a sports podcast, by the way. This is not I Am Athlete. This is not the Pivot Podcast. I love them, though. I watch them all the time. Um, so I'm not, I won't say I'm a sports expert. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I respect anyone and everyone that is following their passion and also inspiring the city that they're from, the country that they're from, and that is what this gentleman beside me is doing. And it's an honor to have him in my presence, seeing him online, seeing him everywhere, being posted by mutual friends, posted by local news, and it's a major moment. For those who don't know, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. Rhode Island is the smallest state in the country, but I say it all the time. We are the smallest state in the country, but we have some of the biggest and brightest creative hearts in the world. And this man is a living testimony and living proof of it. And introduce yourself to the people. It's an honor to have you here. And thank you again. Yes, sir. Quiddy Pay uh, from Providence, Rhode Island. Originally Liberia, but, you know, we up in the 401 right now. <laughs> hey. Um, playing for the Colts. Indianapolis yes, Colts. Yes, sir. Indianapolis Colts. Not Indiana the Little League Colts. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, 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 <laughs> let's clarify it. The NFL. You know what I'm saying? I feel a lot of people that might think. Little League. <laughs> they might think it like. Oh, this guy's got a Pee Wee play? No, 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 no. That's not the case here. You know, the Indianapolis Colts professional football, you know, we saw him being drafted. Now we see him, you know, the highlights being reposted all the time by all types of sports pages, and he's here beside us. And, man, it's an honor, like I said, and thank you again. I'm a, I might thank you 20 times for coming through, but I appreciate it. You said, for starters, before we started, this is your first podcast. My first ever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we got him on his first podcast. You know what I'm saying? This is an honor, bro. I appreciate it. And um, let's just start from the beginning. For those who don't know you, tell the world, not even just Providence, speak to the world. And you can mention Providence, obviously, if you like now. But your beginning as a youth, as a person, as a child, because I'm assuming that's when you loved, you know, your love for football started. When was your first time ever touching a football? My first time ever touching the football, it was in West Elmwood, playing for the Intruders. Wow. Yeah. I'm uh, familiar. I was like, I think six years old. Wow. A bunch, of, a bunch of our boys in the neighborhood, they were going to practice every day. And like, we were wondering, like, where, where was they going, like, mm -hmm. throughout the day? Finally found out, walked to practice one day. We just hopped into practice. And ever since then, we're like, yep, this, <laughs> this is a sport, bruh. Wow. So, yeah. At first we were playing at first we were doing track. My mom had us doing track. Yeah. We were doing track at the Boys and Girls Club, but then it was fun, but at the same time it wasn't like a, it wasn't that fun of a sport. It was just like like we were being kids, but football is way more fun, like as a team sport. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And so so you automatically transitioned from track or did you have any history in track at all? Yeah. That so, started? So I did track all the way through high school. So I I never stopped doing track. I just Started playing football along with track. So oh, wow. Track actually helped me a lot with football. So, like, guys like my size, like, they say, like, I shouldn't be moving this fast, whatever, but it's because of my track background. So Yeah. You're yeah. defying odds. You're breaking the mold right there. And what was this high school that you went to? Bishop Hendrickin High School out in Warwick. Shout out to Warwick Bishop Hendrickin. Shout out to the Hendrickin, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow, that's crazy. And what middle school do you happen to go to, too? I went to Isaac Hopkins Middle School. Isaac Hopkins Middle yeah. School. Wow. And I played football. Did they have a football team in middle school? Nah. So middle school, I played for uh, the North and Forty Niners. So a bunch of like my boys mm. that started with the Intruders, oh. they then flipped and went to the Forty ers So then me and my brother, we went to the Forty ers as well. And then from there, my last year of like pop winter football, I played for the Edgewood Eagles. Wow! Yeah. Wow! That's crazy. And from what I remember hearing, people telling me from your posting, you're from. Grew up in the south side of Providence? Mm, yeah, so like... So all these teams you named, th those are all here in Rhode Island? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. all, in Pro yeah, all in Providence. All in uh, Providence. Okay, okay. And then, yeah, I grew up um, right n right down the street from Classical High School. Like, legit, like a two-minute walk from Classical wow. High School. Wow. Yeah. Behind, like, around Prairie Ave yeah, in that area? Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, I, I, I'm definitely familiar with that area. I grew up more, definitely on Barrage Street on the south, but more towards, like, um, it used to be Compare Foods. Yeah. Now it's America's Food Basket. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> it's not America's Food Basket in there. What's going on? But um, that whole area, I went to, what elementary school did you go to? I went to Bailey, Robert O. Bailey. My my brother, so I did YMCA at Bailey. Wow. Yeah. After but, school? Yeah, after school program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went to um, Flynn, which mm. is not a school anymore. It was, it's yeah. right, it was right next to the hospital. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They had broken down and stuff. Damn. That's crazy. You know, yeah, I went to Bailey, man. That, that shit was a hell of an experience. Yeah. But, man, it's a full circle moment. And how old, you, how old are you now? What's your age as of today? 23. And your birthday already passed, or is it coming up? It's, it's in uh, November. November? Yeah. Wow. Are you a young man? Yeah, young, younger than me, but still the same age because I'm born in February, um, so I'm 24 now. But that's amazing. So let's fast forward a bit. You know, you came from the city. You did your thing. Now, when it came to this transition from being a school athlete to professional athlete, Mm. what was your success in high school? Did you go and it led into university status? Explain that process. So from high school to college, um, I was a small recruit because we're from Rhode Island, smallest state. A lot of people don't really come here to, yeah, to you know, to recruit uh, and stuff like that. But I committed to Boston College. Um, wow, that was like my second offer. I committed to Boston College, and I was set. I was like, I'm gonna go to Boston College. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, so I'm, I'm gonna do my thing there, local school, whatever. And then the DC, the uh, D coordinator from Boston College, went to Michigan. Mm. And then he brought me to Michigan, offered me a scholarship, and I went to a game there for my official visit. Saw the stadium, like it's wraps. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> beautiful I'm stadium. Like, yeah, beautiful stadium. Fans packed out. I'm like, Red and yeah. gold, right? Red and gold, or uh, what, what's the colors? What's Michigan. The, uh, oh, so you went to the Michigan game? I went to, uh, yeah, yeah. So it was a Boston College versus Michigan? No, it was Boston. No, it was Michigan against Wisconsin. Mm. Uh, BC's ACC, uh, Michigan's Big Ten. Okay. But I went to a Michigan game and they're playing Wisconsin. And it What's was a ACC game. and Big Ten? I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Football. It's it's the um it's the, it's a Power Five, so like it's different conferences. Oh, like okay, okay. ACC, Big Ten, uh, Pac-12. Um, what's the other one? I'm drawing a blank. So the conferences. Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. This is yeah. for um NCAA. NCAA. Yeah. Um, Football. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because it, it's it, it gets tricky. But some people, there's some people that only follow SEC. Yeah, yeah, SEC is a big one. There's a lot of people that just follow college sports. Mm-hmm. Like they don't care about like they obviously. Yeah. Oh, I remember him from college, but they'll just watch like religiously college sports. Yeah. It's crazy. And now college athletes obviously are legally they can get paid yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So, True. but you were um, you were pre that no? What what year were yeah, you so in like, B- BC and stuff? Like once I graduated from college, that's when the NIL and shit started happening. Work. College athletes could get paid and they could yeah. get endorsed and stuff like that. So wow. I just missed it. Like, <laughs> damn, I just left college and then they started getting paid. Damn, it's good though. It's, it's, I mean, you, so. fuck it, you're in the NFL now, so you know, guys, timing at the same time. So, what was your success story during college? What was like? What, what ended up happening? Obviously, yeah. you got drafted, but before that, what was your record? What was like? How was your performance? So coming from high school. Hundred can we won state every year, um, and then going to college, small time recruit. Actually, when I decommitted from Boston College to go to Michigan, yeah, the Boston College coaches they were like, "No, nah, I don't go there. Like, you'll never play there. Like, it's not a good idea." They doubted it. that, yeah. So then I was like, "Fuck it, man, I'm, I'm out." So I went to went to Michigan as a freshman. I was a true freshman. I went in with a lot of, like, four or five-star guys, like, guys that, like, rated higher than me coming into college. Yeah. Um, small-time recruit, but then I ended up being a true freshman, mm. getting some playing time and whatnot, and just working my way up the depth chart slowly, slowly. Yeah. And then by sophomore year, like, the third game of sophomore year, I was a starter. Wow. Um, yeah, and then from there, you know, junior year started again, and senior year started, and then I am where I am now. And your position again was? Defensive end. Defensive end. Yeah. And this was something that – Growing up, it was always your decision. This is what you always were destined to do. Because uh, the thing is with the NFL, or just football as a sport in general, is interesting because I feel like basketball and and baseball to some extent, like you can kind of be multifaceted mm-hmm. way more when it comes to your, like your actual position. Because in baseball, you can be shortstop, but you can be a batter, you can hit homers, et cetera. 
Uh, and the pitcher's also bat too, no? The pitcher's bat as well. This pitcher's I mean, at bat. It's not really required in baseball. If you could throw 95 up, then that's what they care about. But it's like uh, when you're coming up, you ha- you need to hit a little bit. You know, some some pitchers convert to hitters. You know, that's when they're trying to still figure themselves out. So Yeah. But um, when in your case, when it came to football, you never were, you know, considering quarterback. Did you ever even like that position or anything like of a wide receiver more on the offensive end? So for me, I thought I was going to play running back. Oh, really? So, in high school, I played running back. But then, like, sophomore year, they moved me to DN. But I was thinking I was going to be, like, Brandon Jacobs, like a big <laughs> back. They were like, nah, man, you need to get on a D-line and, like, just, just go play defense. So then, sophomore year, I converted to the defensive end. Freshman year, I was running back in safety. And then, sophomore year, I played defensive end. And then, junior year, wow. DN, running back. And then, senior year, same thing, DN, running back. Wow, but on my on my high school highlight film it was mainly like running, running back. back because I didn't have much defensive highlights because teams were running away from me and <laughs> shit like that. So Cause you're fast too. That's yeah. the thing because you have the track background. Yeah. Now, and I don't even want to skip ahead. So let's st- let's stay in order. So when it comes now to transitioning to NFL, mm-hmm. what was the first moment that you got like the rumblings of like? First of all, it's possible, like in general, like, oh, I, I am, I'm going to the league. I think for me, like coming into college, my thing was like, I'm going to a good university. I'm going to graduate. I'm yeah. going to get a good degree. I'm going to get a good job. That's what I'm thinking. I like NFL was never really like a thought. It was like, really, uh, it was like, uh, it was a dream. It was like, if I could make it there, you know, it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah. But it wasn't your plan A. Yeah, it wasn't my plan A because I was like, it's a very, like, you know, like, cause they give you all the numbers. Like, yeah. yeah. This is how many athletes make it to college. It seems impossible. Many, yeah, it seems impossible yeah. how they put it, like, with all the numbers and shit. Yeah, the stats are, like, crazy. Yeah, but then once you get there and whatnot, like, my junior year, I started, and then at the end of the – towards the end of the year, a bunch of my coaches that were coming to me, they were like, you know, if you come back one more year, you can boost, uh, boost your draft stock. Wow. This and that. And I'm just, I wasn't even thinking about NFL, to be honest. I'm like, whoa. And then <laughs> – Agents started calling my phone. They're like, yeah, like, what are you thinking? Are you going to come back? Or are you going to leave uh, wow. for the NFL this year? And that's when I was like, all right, bet. Like, it's 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 a possibility for real. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. And then eventually you, I'm assuming because from the stories I hear, you signed with an agent mm. before anything, right? So, um, <coughs> so after after your season, after your call, because you can't sign with the agent. During. During. Le- legally, yeah. Yeah, legally. Once the season was over, signed that paper, and then legit, like, right after the season was over, I flew straight to Arizona to start, like, my combine training and yeah. stuff like that to get prepared for the combine. And was yeah. that intimidating? How was the NFL combine being around so many, you know, competitors? Because you're all fighting for, yes, to be drafted, but then everything's in order by numbers, and then being on specific teams, potentially being traded. How was that experience? So for us, like, they canceled the combine because of the COVID stuff. Uh, mm. So all we did was pro day. And, like, the thing, like, going into pro day and combine, you kind of have a good sense of, like, what round you're going to go in with, like, the hype and buzz or whatever, you know, like draft analysts saying, oh, this guy's going to get drafted, drafted mm. in this round to this team or whatever. So Pre-drafts, you, prediction drafts. Yeah, yeah so, you, like, you have a good sense of where you're going to go, but you never know until, like, it happens. Facts. So, like, if you're first round locked, like, then you'll know, all right, but I'm going in the first round and I'll be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like once you're like, once you get the predictions and you're like, all right, but this is the numbers I need to hit. This is what I need to do with my pro day. And then once you hit it and once you have good interviews with teams and whatever, then, then you're cool for real. Wow. What was your first, um, team interview? Like who my interviewed f- you first? My first team interview, um. Who showed interest like, at, like this? Like who was the first team? I think, I forget who was the first team that showed interest, but the, the team that showed the most interest was the Giants. Mm. I had like five interviews with the Giants. New York, wow, right? New, New York, York Giants. Yep. Yeah, New York, New York Giants. Giants. But um, yeah, they, they it just never happened. But yeah, like that was the team I had the most interviews with. And wow. then after them, I think it was the the Vikings. But like people say, like on drafted, like you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I was like, at first I was like, nah, like, like you'll know, like if a team messes with you, you know what I'm saying? Like if you talk with them a lot, then they'll draft you. But I'm thinking like, all right, but I'm probably gonna go to. York or Minnesota, mm. and then they they Colts uh, came out of nowhere. yeah they they uh, traded back, 
and then um, the Vikings traded back, and then they drafted somebody else. And then next thing I know, I check my phone, I see a Indy number calling me. I'm like, Indianapolis. <laughs> I guess the That's phone crazy. Is, yeah, but like you have no like I wasn't even expecting because I only spoke spoke with the Colts maybe like two or three times. Yeah, yeah I spoke with the D coordinator and then the D line coach. And I spoke with um, a scout, and then that was it. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like. Yeah, was, they might pass on me. Like, yeah. oh, there's no really crazy interest. Mm, yeah. But then look at it now. Yeah. That's crazy. And you didn't have, like, a favorite team, like, that you wanted to play, or, or did you? Like, or you just wanted to get in? How, how, yeah, how so, like, I was never really, like, a big, like, um, sports fan growing up. I was more of, like, individual players. I would like to watch uh, them. Oh, okay, okay. But, um. Growing up, I loved the Ravens defense. Like when they won the Super Bowl, like my eighth grade year, I messed with them. And then you know we're in Rhode Island, uh, New England, so everyone's New Patriots fans. Patriots, so, Pat's Nation. Yeah, so we're all Tom Brady fans and stuff <laughs> like that. But yeah, I mean those are like the two teams kind of growing up. But wow, I really have like a favorite favorite. And that's crazy. That's crazy because it's a uh, it's a non really traditional story because you know it just proves like you really just were naturally gifted by God. Like, you got the talent and, you know, stars really aligned in your favor. You weren't purely pursuing that, but you were ready, you know, because yeah. you, you were ready. You know, you were fit. You did everything you did. Put in the work. Put in the work, and you, you know, crossed off every check. You checked off every freaking box, you know, so that's amazing. So now explain to people, because a lot of people listening also might not be in tune with sports, and they don't know that, that actual format of how do you even get to NFL draft night? Explain that moment. Yeah. Was it during? You said it was. Was that also during COVID? So was it all Zoom? I forgot that whole draft so, year. Yeah. So um, the draft that year it was in Cleveland. Mm. It was in Cleveland, but I did my draft party in Denver because I lo- I didn't really want to like uh, do it in Cleveland because I wanted my family to be with me. Yeah. I didn't want to do it in Rhode Island because everyone's going to be like, yo, bro, I'm trying to come to the yeah, draft. Pull up, yeah, pull up, pull up. It's going to be mayhem. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, you know what? Like, my brother, he stays out in um, Denver, so I'm going to go do it out there. Go out there, you get the camera set up, NFL team came, put the TV and whatever, because, like, they want to broadcast everything. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, like, uh, the night starts, they go to the first pick, whatever, and, like, you're so, like, I was so nervous, bro. I was just <laughs> sitting there, like, tapping my leg, checking my phone. I'm oh, like, oh, my God. But, yeah, bro, like, it's just, that was, like, the, it was it was, it was, was the worst night of my life, but it was the greatest night of my life. At, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. Oh, why, you say, why you say it's the one of the worst? Because it's, like, nerve-wracking. Yeah. Nerve- it's your first time in front of a camera, too, no? Uh, well, not not really, but, like, it's just, like, it's just nerve-wracking. It's just, like, man, like, someone needs to hurt and pick me, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, that's fuck. true. And then once That's that true. call comes in, you're just like, oh, finally. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So for those who don't know, what was your round of number? I was round one, pick 21. Amazing. Amazing. First round, yeah. That's so crazy. Go, that's, it's, it's so inspiring, like, that aspect of you not necessarily having a plan A of let me go and die hard and, like, oh, I'm going to make it an NFL or bust. You were like. You know, I play football. I'm good at it, but I really just want to graduate and get a good job. Yeah. And then you end up in the top 25 first round NFL draft. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And now, ever since then, ha- ha- has it, like, obviously you're in the league, you're playing, but has it, like, hit, like, what you're going through right now in, in your life at 23 years old? I think my rookie year, it didn't really hit for real because, like, it was just football for me. Yeah, I'm getting paid now, but like going into the season, it was just like I still got to play. F- like, and that was my first job too. Yeah, but I didn't feel like a job because like That's I've been crazy. doing it like my whole life. Like, yeah, I just been playing football. So, um, and then NFL compared to college, like the camp, I thought NFL camp was fun. Oh, I, everyone really? Was like, man, they f- and like NFL camp was like as hard as that, but. College camp, that's you thought that, it was harder. College camp arguably. was like, yeah, you started like six a.m. You don't get back to your room until like 10 p.m. Wow. And throughout that whole day, yeah. you're doing stuff. You're in meetings. Wow. Uh, walkthroughs, practice. Wow. Like college camp is unmatched, bro. I swear it's unmatched. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. But then I also, I feel like it's, it goes with your energy. Like uh, you seem like such a dope and nonchalant and cool person that 
I don't know. It could be like you really manifested this somehow because it's crazy. I've always heard the opposite. Like I've always heard like the NFL, like the camp is like insane and people go crazy. But from the bird's mouth right here, this is someone that's actually was, went through yeah. it. We're hearing it that, you know, at least for him, it was an enjoyable and fun experience. But that's what you also want to have at the same time. Mm. You are working. Yes, it is a job. Yeah. But if you're not having fun, I feel like it, it's like, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. You know, so I feel like that's why like, I feel like um, I've never really like worked a day in my life because I've been doing it for so long. Like it's 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 so fun, bro. And I also I feel like I didn't have as much stress because I was a first rounder. So I didn't really have the stress of will I get cut today. Yeah, I didn't realize how bad that was until I got to the league. Like, it's stories, but I never really realized it until one day I came in the morning, went to my locker, and then my locker mate, who I speak with, like, almost every day, I, I look in his locker, his locker's cleaned out empty. I'm like, <laughs> where's the old boy at? They're yeah. like, oh, he gone, bro. He, he, he out of here. Wow. I'm just like, damn, like, that, like... Like that locker cleaned out, and it's, and then they bring somebody like the same day. Somebody was in that locker, that same locker. Wow, like clockwork, bro! Like they'll cut you, bring somebody else in, cut somebody, bring somebody else in. Oh my god! And it's just like that. It's crazy. Wow, crazy. Oh my! And 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 now this is gonna this is officially gonna be your second year. My second year, yeah. So your sophomore year into the league. What okay, what would you say to sum up your first year? Like, how was that whole experience? Because, obviously, it's, like, you're breaking that mold of, you know, I'm actually in the NFL, and you weren't really benched. Like, you were played. You were actually active. So how was that, like, now looking back? I think that experience, it was good for me in the future run because I was a starter Mm -hmm. as a rookie. So I was doing a lot of learning on the fly. Yeah. I was just thrown into the fire. So I was learning more on the field than, like, in the class and stuff. So, and then for my position, too, I was playing right end, mm-hmm. which I'm playing against the left tackle. And if, if you know, like, the left tackle is, like, the best offensive lineman on the O-line. So I'm going up against the best O-lineman every single week as a rookie. Wow. Whoa. Against, like, all pros and stuff. So my first couple of weeks, it was slow because I'm going up against, like, vets that have been in the league for. What do you mean by slow? Like, it was, like, my stats weren't, like. Yeah, like oh, okay. like eye popping, like, you know, like fans, like they just look at the stat line, like oh, like like he's a bust, yeah, he's a bust, uh-huh. he's a bust, he's a yeah, bust. Exactly. First round, ah, uh. exactly. Oh, yeah. I hate you that were trying shit. to figure out formation, pretty much, right? Yeah, so like for me, it was more like just seeing how they play, cause like the vets, they do like little like sly shit that like the that that they know that the, um they can get away with, cause they've been in the league for so long. Yeah. Um, but then I have to like just watch film and like just get used to it. Like I remember. Like week two, we played uh, the Rams and they had the old lineman, uh, uh, Andrew uh, Whitworth. I think that's what his last name is. Um, and he's like 40 something years old. He's been in the league for like 20 something years, 20 years. God damn. Wow. So, uh, yeah, big veteran. Vet, yeah, vet, vet. So, like, Bro. he knew like like all the tricks of the game and everything. So, you know, and then my first week, I played against uh, Dwayne Brown, all pro tackle. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it was tough, bro, until like I got into like the. The rhythm of things, I started playing well, and then I got used to the to the speed of the game and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, it was. It, I think it was like me getting thrown into fire was was needed. Yeah, Did they play mind games on you. Any any games? Um, like just like trying to like because he's a rookie, or rookie, rookie. Yeah, no, I feel like um, I feel you don't like, have to say their names. I'm just yeah, saying. <laughs> not like, like I feel like they'll do like some slick shit, but like nothing like. Nothing dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Just, like, see, like, how you would react to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's crazy, man. That's, that's, dope. that's so amazing to hear. And what was, like, the biggest game during your first season so far that you went through? The biggest game my first season? Um, I think the biggest game for us, I think the Cardinals game was up there. Yeah. How we played that game because that was a really, like um, – that was a game where, like, a lot of our players had COVID. Mm. So we were down a good amount of our players. And the Cardinals, they had all their players on, on their roster. So yeah. we're going into that game, like, 
uh, <laughs> we just gonna go out there and ball. You feel me? And then yeah. we started going out there, and they run a high tempo um, offense. So mm. we're out there dying, busting Calamari oh, fast, man. so we trying to chase him down. But you know that was that was a good game. I feel like I had like five pressures that game, and I'm trying to chase this 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 little nigga down. I'm like, yeah, bruh, yeah. he going fast. Crazy. He fast as hell, bro. He, <laughs> he's so fast. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, and then we win the winning that game. It was uh, I think we maybe won by like it's one close, score, right? Yeah, yeah was, I remember it, that. It was a close game, but yeah, like we went we went into their home on Christmas and mm-hmm. we won with like a lot of our starters not even in. I think our whole own line was no, I think our right tackle was the only one that finished the game. Wow! Everybody else either had COVID or they got injured. Wow! Yeah, that's amazing. Who's been like the most like impactful OG? Or just someone that don't necessarily got to be OG, but an est- established, famous player that you've been around in your rookie year. Been around? Yeah. I think for us, I mean, just for me, like on my team, um, the Forrest Buckner, I would say, just because like mm-hmm. Big Vet um, tried to take care of the rookies our, our rookie year. It was me and Dio, who's a second round pick. Um, and like for the rookies, we have rookie duties and stuff like that but you know some teams the vets say od they'll be like oh go go buy me this go buy me that but he was like he told all the vets like hey like they're gonna get the snacks they're gonna do this but like you know what i'm saying like don't chill yeah Take chill out yeah i like that yeah so that's classy yeah but at the same time like when you get to the league it's not like college where you're with your boys all day like you go to class with your boys day and night you eat breakfast with your boys you go to practice and you then you go back because you room with your boy and stuff like that. As soon as you get to the league, you come into work, you work, and then everyone has to go home because they got families and kids and stuff. <laughs> and I'll, I'll have a girlfriend, I'll have no kids, so I go back to the to my house and like I'll just be chilling, like yeah, I'll just be chilling like solo, like and it was like that the whole year. Yeah, because all types of ages. You got the young players like yourself, and you got the yeah. veterans that are damn near fifty. Like it's yeah. <laughs> it's all types of shit. So that's true. Mm, that is yeah. true. I would imagine because in college is obviously not like that. Like. Yeah. It's like a certain age, like within that age that people are in, within that one, two, three years. But NFL is like it could be any any age that you encounter. Yeah. That's amazing. And you what meet, was like? Well, you got something? Go go. You yeah. could go. Did you meet Tom Brady? Have you have you gotten to meet? <laughs> I sacked Tom Brady. What? Oh, yes. Yeah, I sacked Tom Brady. Yeah. That's crazy. You didn't know this? Did this? he say anything? Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he's a Rhode Island legend right here. Bro, bro, not everyone could say that. That's crazy. Yeah. So walk people through this experience of, you know, you being paid, That's being crazy. this, you know, what was the, what the, obviously you were playing that day. What was the, the, the actual position you were playing? Obviously the, uh, the, the DN. Yeah. And then. It's just break it down. Like, do you remember it? Was it as impactful? Because you just said it nonchalantly, right? <laughs> but obviously, you're you're in it. It's in a zone. But then there's kids at home who were you, you know, starstruck, bro, or no? Nah? I wasn't. Nah, I wasn't starstruck. But I was like, I gotta sack him, bro. <laughs> Yo, Yo, that's like, so competitive. That was the first game you faced. That's him? a competitive it was, it was nature. First, the first yeah, game, yeah, right? My first game I ever the played. The first game. Yeah. Wow, that's that's crazy, yeah. man. I feel like that's, that's a crazy. that's a that's a milestone in itself because it's players that face him. And probably take years to like yeah. sack Tom Brady. I mean, you he's know. not the fastest guy, but he's not the like fastest guy. I feel like in his recent him. years, he's been sacked more. But he's like, he really doesn't like. I don't know. But like, he's so smart and like, yeah, knowing no. like how much time he has to, to throw. Yeah, the ball he's before. very calculated. Yeah, he's yeah. he's one of the best. He's the best, bro. He's the best. Damn, so because I was gonna ask also like, what was like your, like w- like who's like the best player you've played against? But if you're sacking Tom Brady, it can't be him. Right. So how did that happen? Like you got like you, the defense was, uh, uh, bro. Just yeah. I don't, I break it so down. Break I don't down. even know how to. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know football. Yeah, so. for for those who are watching again, reminder: this is not I am athlete. It's not the pivot podcast. <laughs> this is a universal podcast. Did you guys blitz so how, how was yeah, it? So. What was the inning? The down? Everything. <laughs> the inning. <laughs> yeah, because I know he remembers it. He has to remember it. Yeah, so I would. It was it was a second down. It was a second down for sure. Um, and I was coming from the interior, so I wasn't playing on the end that play. I was coming from the interior, but I was doing a, a stunt where I would go a little bit in the B gap, and I would wrap to the C to contain. Yeah. So I'm going to the C, and then as I'm containing, I see him step up in the pocket. So I stop, and I start to retract. I start going back this way, and he still has a ball in his hand. I'm like, this is it, bro. <laughs> this is it. And I finally <laughs> just go and sack him, and I'm just like, at first, I didn't believe, and I got you up. Ce- you, oh, you didn't celebrate it. You didn't celebrate it. Oh, hell yeah. I was no, like, no. Ah! 
<laughs> That's dope, yo. Field. And then like soon, soon as like as soon as I sacked them after the game, I was getting all the texts. We're like, damn, bro, you sacked Tom Brady, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because like everyone was like, bro, you played Tom Brady this week. Like if you sack him, that's that's like all that's, time yeah, go status. That's crazy year one year with one, potentially bro. what was gonna be his last year, but it's like we don't know with him. He's back again. He might go back. Who knows? But yeah. you know. Damn. But you definitely solidified yourself there. It, 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 you know what I'm saying? Not every rookie does that. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. And then, like, so that game, do you have more sacks? Was it, like, uh, or was it, like, that? your only one that whole game? So that was my only one that, that whole game. Because, like, like, I think we had maybe, like, two sacks that, or three sacks that whole game. But, like I said, like, once he gets the ball, it's, like, it's a clock. Like, he has in his head, like. Mississippi, two Mississippi, and he throws the ball. Yeah. The only time, like, you can kind of get him is, like, if the coverage is, like, elite, like, nobody open, then he has to hold it or throw the ball away. And he just so happened to tuck the ball. I don't know why he was running, but he just happened to start running. I'm like, I'm like, got him. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you feel like ever since then, like, because you faced him, obviously, at one more time, right? No, that was, that was, that was only, only one, one time. Yeah. So, but ever since then, do you feel. Like, is there any anticipation this year when it comes to facing him of, like, like he, he obviously, I'm pretty sure he remembers that because Tom Brady studies everything. Like, now when he faces you, like, that being a thing now, like, almost like, oh, that's, that's the guy. Like, this is the guy right here. Like, I got, like, he got your number. I got your number. Like, he knows. Yeah, so I think the only time we would play him this year is if we play him, played him in the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, I feel like, I feel like he, he, uh, he knows everybody, like, Especially like Michigan guys because he went to Michigan as well. So yeah, he knows everybody in the league as far as like studying because he studies film like crazy. He knows everybody. So I feel like if he watches the previous year film, like oh this was <clears> the <throat> play that this guy sacked me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the scouting report and stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing, man. And aside from Tom Brady, what has been like your experience? Like you said that you weren't very much of a heavy, you know, crazy football fan growing up. But now that you're in it, have you become more of obviously a fan of the league? Like, do you play Madden? Do you play yourself in Madden? Like, do you go through these experiences that one as a kid might feel like, when I make it to NFL, I would do that? Yeah, so I definitely copped the new Madden just because I was in it. But I haven't really played Madden since uh, Madden 25th uh, anniversary with Barry Sanders on the cover. Yeah, yeah. Because Madden's the same stuff every year. Bro. Every year. I yeah, just got sick. And I, I, I like, I don't even play the game anymore like that. So Yeah. I think I just got that game because that was the first game I was in. Yeah. But I never, like, really, I never played it for real. What's your, what's your overall rating in there? Do they have it? Like, do they do that with that? I think I'm, like, a, like a 70, 74, 73. What do you think? Is that accurate? Do you want to hire? I think I think I have to prove myself first. You feel yeah. Me? I feel yeah. like rookie year, I feel like they always start off low, but then yeah. this year I'm going to definitely make that jump. Yeah, yeah bro, because Jeremy was in the 60s last year, and now they have him in the 80s. Like They already put like certain moments and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, Jeremy Payne. And, and we'll be the show? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's my boy that made his uh, – Yeah, the, 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 the province player that made it to MLB. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Man, that that's incredible. And now – do you watch it more avidly? Aside from like watching your highlights and watching, you know, studying film on the opponents that you're about to face, do you watch it like just for fun? Like, were you watching the Super Bowl and all that? So, Super Bowl weekend, yeah, I went to LA to go watch the game, but I ended up like not because like Super Bowl weekend is fun, like activities and stuff start on like a Thursday, yeah. So everyone comes in on a Thursday. There's, like, marketing opportunities out there. You do some signings. You get some mm. quick cash because all the fans go out there. So it's a lot of money to be made. Super networking. Weekend. Yeah. Networking like crazy. Go out there and network, make money, sign, activities, stuff like that. It's a lot of, like, um, concerts, clubs, like, stuff like that going on. So yeah. it was fun the whole week. And then Sunday came, and then we were all toast. Like, <laughs> I missed half the game because I was slumped. <laughs> I was slumped, bro. It was it was lit. It was it was, it was so lit. How do you uh, feel about the results? Did you have like a, uh, you know, a dog in the fight? Like you were picking this team or that team, or did you not really care? It was just more for the experience. I think um, there was like certain players I wanted to see win win a ring. I definitely wanted to see Von Miller get uh, another ring. Um, so OG see, right there. Yeah, I want to see OBJ. OBJ. Uh, so funny thing on draft day, yeah, I did my draft party in Denver, mm -hmm. 
So after the draft party, whatever, like we're we're lit, we're drinking and whatnot. Then I did it on the rooftop of this hotel. Okay. Go down the go down the elevator. We're on the first floor, like just vibing, chilling. Yeah. And then somebody pulls up in a Lambo. We're like, who who's that? <laughs> Fucking Von Von Miller hopped out the Lambo. (laughs) I'm like, yo, no way. But like the 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 camera guy that I hired, he's best friends with Von Miller. So, bro, that shit was mad. And then I hopped. Didn't tell you anything? No, no, no. (laughs) And then like hopped in the Lambo, and then like he he took me driving around, whatever. And then we all went back to his crib, and then like we was just chilling, whatever. He was he was spinning game, like when he gets a league, like this is what you need to do. Wow. Like just like telling me like all the tricks or whatever. But yeah, no, that, that night was fun as hell. That's uh, amazing. That's, that's such a honorable move by Von Miller, but I've always heard similar stories like that. Like he's one of those ones that, you know, he's obviously made it to where he's made it to one of the richest players ever, but he always, you know, looks out for the, those up and coming. That's crazy. I, I, I guess I was like, oh, if it's Denver, it had to be, you know, Von Miller, especially at that time. Because he was still on the – was he on the Broncos? He, he was still on the Broncos, Because like, yeah. he got traded, like, mid-season, no? or Yeah. Right? Well, like, yeah, like like mid to early season. Yeah, mid to early season. Or you know. maybe it was mid to late season. Mid to late season, yeah. Yeah. And then look at him now with the freaking, a freaking chip, man. That's amazing, you know. Especially OBJ, seeing OBJ, that whole moment was just, you know, as a fan, you know, him even crying and just that whole emotion. It's like – that's what you guys do it for, you know, leading up to the whole year for that one moment. Before we continue this podcast episode, we pardon the interruption with this week's local business highlight, Papi's Coquito. Uh, my name is Lewis. I am the CFO of Papi's Coquito. Travis Escobar, COO. What is a Coquito by definition, Travis? Yeah, so if you haven't heard about Coquito or haven't tried it, you know, you're in luck. If you're in Rhode Island, you get to go find where we're at. So Coquito stands for Little Coconut uh, in Spanish. It originates in Puerto Rico. It's a cream liqueur drink. It's at a 15% uh, alcohol percentage. Mixes well with coffee, so similar to a Bailey's or a rum chata. But what is really important about Coquito, so in the Latino culture, it is something that gets brought in in, in the families. In, in our situation, our founder, Victor Regino, his abuela would make uh, Coquito, bring it to the family. It brings people together. People go in Thanksgiving, Christmas, throughout the holiday season, come have a glass of Coquito and share memories and have good times. So Coquito is definitely that. It represents family. But also we have palm trees on our bottle. It's a year-round drink. We recommend trying it over ice. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do with this delicious tasting drink. So this is the best Coquito in the state. Uh, so I'll say yep. that, and I, I'd put this coquito among you know any other coquito uh, out there in the in, in the world. Uh, we've spent a lot of time doing research, cultivating development to try to bring the most authentic coquito to the market. Uh, we're all Puerto Rican, we're all Latino uh, mm. here here in the state. It's delicious, fifteen percent. Mixes well with an espresso martini. Obviously, you could drink it straight up mm-hmm. uh, on the rocks and um, have fun with it. So, And when it comes to Papi's Coquito, where can people um, find this product, especially if you're in the New England area and in search of wanting to grab a bottle right now today? Well, it's in about nine establishments right now. Uh, Black Sheep, Brass Monkey, Snickers, um, liquor stores as far as Phil Gasborough's, uh, Jordan's, uh, Eno's Fine Wine. If you're trying to go to restaurants... You go to Black Sheep, go to Brass Monkey, yeah. go to Revival. Uh, um, and Black Sheep, you go get a Poppy's Pick Me Up, that espresso martini. Oh, they got the drink ready. Uh, and also go on our website, go on poppyscoquito.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we even got a TikTok. You know, we got. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but definitely find us out. And we're going to be at a store near you. This is the beginning process of a millennial Latino business. Uh, in this state. Um, so we're definitely going to make sure that you can find Poppy's Coquito uh, statewide and, you know, in other states. People are always buying Coquitos from cousins or, you know, people on IG, Instagram, locally posting it on their stories every time when it comes to Thanksgiving, Christmas. But here we have an established brand that eventually you're going to be able to go to the store and grab it any day, any moment. 
whether it's for last minute or if you want to buy it, it has like an expiration date. I guess you guys said it like a two year type of situation. So you can literally stock up on this <laughs> for like, oh, wow, you yeah. know, for a freaking pandemic, whatever. You know, if the world ends, make sure you got your puppies coquito right next to you guys for sure. And can you kind of describe when it comes to the actual logo process? What was the idea behind it? You see it says Papi Coquito. You got the cocoa and a, like a drop on top of that. So the logo is actually a coconut. Mm. Pay attention to it. Right? Oh, so okay. It's white inside. <laughs> I don't mean to say pay attention to it. So it's like it's like when you That's cut a, when you cut a mind. coconut open, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Perfect. inside of the coconut is the white. Um, yeah, we have a very good graphic designer. We actually were shocked uh, once we uh, found out what it really was. I didn't even think about that. Uh, That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, it was it's dope. Very good drink. Um, it's healthy, believe it or not. Uh, we went through a very rigorous process with the recipe. So we're diversifying the liquor industry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Diversifying the liquor industry. You guys heard it first right here. Bobby's Coquito, make sure to support this brand based out of Providence, Rhode Island. And now it's going to be, you know, hopefully, I'm pretty sure I'm calling it 365 days from now, number one Coquito brand in the whole fucking country. <laughs> I predicted it here. <laughs> What's today? <laughs> they know what today is. <laughs> it's a predicted, written in stone. We'll see. Thank you guys for coming through today. Thank you. Thank you. And now going into your second season, mm. how does it work with you as a player? Are you contractually signed for this year? Do you have an estimated end time on your contract? What is your current situation? So when you sign that rookie contract, it's four years for sure. By default. Yeah. And then if they want to sign you back, like they'll tag you with the fifth year option. Mm. Um. But, like, if, like, if they feel like you're not going to be, like, worth it or whatever, then they won't sign you to a fifth year. Then they'll let your rookie year, I mean, your rookie contract run out, then you'll be a free agent after that. But wow. if they plan to sign you long term, they'll sign you for a fifth year, and then they'll extend your contract after that. Wow. But, um. So, right now, that hasn't happened yet with you, like, the yeah, fifth no, year? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm year two right now, so I still got, I still got four more years before I even, like, think mm. about a, a second contract. Wow. And and yeah yeah and you pr so you don't even think about it obviously you just, I'm, I'm, just I'm just doing yeah, your thing I'm just trying to grind right now grind, yeah because everyone's like that's the thing like you grind to get to that second contract once you make it to the second contract then you've made it yeah like you're millionaire you're, you're you're like you make good money as a rookie millionaire and stuff like that at a young age but you make real money when you get to that second contract yeah especially for my position like you're starting to see more of like. The hundred mils, yeah, yeah, high ninety mils, stuff like that. Where like it's a lot of money to be made, bro. No, 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 no. Don't tell me <laughs> twice, bro. It's it's amazing, bro. You 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 you're doing your thing. This is beautiful. And now, when even when it comes to sponsorship level, have have you signed any contracts with that? With the sponsorships, with any actual brand or like actual companies yet? Yeah, so I'm a Nike athlete. Nike athlete for Yeah, that was a dream come true. Like, wow. That was, that was, like, the only brand, like, my agent was asking, like, hey, what's some of the rest of either Nike or Jordan? Because I'm, because uh, Michigan was Jordan. So, mm. I, was, I mean, if Jordan, like, happens and it happens, but, like, Nike was, like, I want to be a Nike athlete. Yeah. Growing up, I, like, wearing Air Maxes, like, sometimes not even being able to buy certain shoes because, like, you just couldn't afford it. Yeah. I was, like, I want to be a Nike athlete. That's amazing. Like, happen so now how, how how does that work you sign that or do they, so they approach you and what level of a player are you currently when that happens was it preseason or was it during the season so it was like pre-draft stuff mm. so it was um it's like pre-draft is like when all the brands are sending you stuff like adidas sends you stuff Under wow Armour just sends you gear and nike sends you gear stuff like that and then like you kind of just wear their stuff or whatever but with Nike as well, like, they're not really big into football because they make most of their money on the basketball side and, like, mm -hmm. soccer side. So Makes sense. They're not really signing much football players because they don't really, like, they don't need it, to be honest. Yeah. But especially with COVID year as well, all the marketing opportunities were at an all-time low because people weren't buying a lot of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of the marketing and all that, it was, it was really low, but they only signed, like, a couple of guys. And I just so happened to be one, one of them. Guys, yeah, one of the few guys that they signed. And now, when that happens, are you contractually you have to wear Nike, like wear Nike cleats, yeah. no matter what type shit? Like it's like by default, right? Yeah. So in college, I used to spat my cleats. Like I used to wear tape over my cleats, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "That's gonna be an issue. Like you can't wear the tape over your cleats because we have to see the Nike." The sign. logo. It's yeah. gonna block the logo. Yeah. So 
I can't squat my cleats no more. <laughs> Listen, I got an idea. Tell Nike to send you some Nike tape. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of Nike stuff. And Nike, <laughs> if you don't, if Nike doesn't have Nike tape, feel free to create it. Just give me twenty percent of that. You know? <laughs> but I think that would be perfect. And you could be the guy that breaks that. I mean, not talk too much. I'm giving, <laughs> I'm giving away game. That's a genius idea. I just gave away a genius idea. That's crazy. Nike Damn, tape. but I, I would imagine because like they're very anal about that shit. Like they, if you. It's the branding. Everything is branding. And you're a highlightable player. You have highlights. So if you're going to be wearing their brand, they wouldn't want you to have the tape. But has that, did that ever affect you too much? Like, you're like, fuck, like, I wish I could do that because, like, it might affect your play. Yeah. So, like, coming in, like, you can kind of wear whatever cleat you want as long mm -hmm. as you got the spat because, like, the spat allows ankle um, support. Yeah. But then once you can't wear the spat anymore, like, the ankle feels kind of loose. Yeah. So... I kind of struggled throughout the year finding like the right cleat for me that I can bend in wow. without rolling my ankle because I didn't have the spat. Yeah. So then I switched cleats like four or five times. Damn. And um, yeah, I finally found the one that fits in my foot. But yeah, that's like, amazing. Yeah, it was kind of like a, it was it was experience for sure because like you can't spat, so like you're just trying on new cleats, breaking them in every single week, and then yeah. finally find the one. Then you have to buy all those cleats because once Nike stops making the cleats, that's it. You can't buy them no more. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, like, if you really like a cleat, they say buy as much as you can of that cleat. Wow. So, like, down the road, like, you can have all those spares that you can just pull out the, out the trunk and, like, just put them on. Damn. So, you probably got mad cleats at home just, like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when I, this offseason, like, I bought, like, so many of the same cleat, like, just all out. I'll, I'll call Nike and be like, yo, like, send me, like, if you have anything, like, in the back, track these cleats down, send it to me. Or, like, anytime I can find the cleat, I would go hit people up, like the plugs or whatever, hit them up. Like, yeah. you know, I'll find this cleat for me. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. And is it an issue where, because I know LBJ does it, but you can customize the cleat, but it just has to still show the logo? Yeah, so you can do that. Um, Have you done that yet? Not yet, no. Like, we had one game in the season where it was like the My Cause, My Cleats, where you can customize the cleat. Yeah, your own cleat, everyone. Where, and then you can uh, donate the uh, profits to, like, your nonprofit foundation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, so you dropped one with, um like, a Nike one? Yeah, so like the nonprofit foundation I'm with is called Tough, the Uniform Funding Foundation. Mm -hmm. We fund uniforms to underserved youth football teams. But we kind of started getting more into like women's basketball and nice, like like a bunch of um, different sports and stuff like that. But yeah, okay, well that's amazing, and that's like the main um, nonprofit association you currently have. Yeah, so I feel like that's the one that I'll do until like I ended up getting my own but yeah for now like i'm gonna just promote tough starting uh, somewhere yeah uh, my my boy started tough so like oh really my boy adam shibley when we was in college oh wow junior, yeah he started it from the ground up and then he just asked me to be a part of it yeah and i'm just a guy that kind of like just promotes it whatever because i have a, a big following so i promote it a lot yeah um get a lot more people to um try to donate get more people to fund their own teams and yeah stuff like that yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. that's beautiful to see now, what is your anticipation for this year? Like, how how does it feel now? Like, do you have any expectations? You know, right now, currently, you just told me, like, you are you guys are busy. You basically, explain for the people who don't know, we spoke about it off camera. You're basically busy Monday through... Monday through Thursday. Monday through th yeah. Thursday. And what's going on right now? What are you, what's your state? What are you doing? So, it's OTAs right now. Um, and... It's pretty much like just off season are those, are lifting. Those like practicing. Oh, okay. yeah, off season lifting with the team. We'll do walkthroughs. Every team has like a different form of OTAs. Like for yeah. us, it's more walkthrough and like more individual period with our coaches, and then film stuff, learning the playbook because we got a new defense this year. So yeah, learning the playbook and like just lifting. We're like we started like nine men, but like one, so it was short days. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. And what has been? the biggest moment so far in your entire NFL career, it could be either on or off the field, you know, and obviously something that you can share because you might have experienced something you can't you can't share, you know, so, you know what I'm saying? Might have saw some crazy NFL player night, you know, but aside from that, something that you can share for the people, like a story of, like, the craziest moment so far in your career. I think for a lot of guys in my position, you know, coming from very humble beginnings. Yeah. All we want to do is, like, take care of our family. You know, we want to make it to give back to our moms, you know, be able to buy our brothers, like, whatever they want, whatever, stuff like that. So this off season, I just bought my mom a house. 
That yeah, was great I saw for that. Me. Like, congratulations that again. Appreciate it. In person, congratulations. Appreciate congratulations. It. Yeah, so that was something that I always wanted to do. Like, my mom always preached, like, man, I just want to have my own backyard, you know what I'm saying? Man. I was like, that's one thing I have to do. Like, got her a car. I retired her. I was like, I got to buy her a crib now. Damn. So I, bro. I bought her a crib, and, you know, that's that's kind of just what I, that's what I always wanted to do, like, just to take care of my people, you know. Other people have different ambitions, you know, they want to do it for different stuff. But for me personally, as long as my mom is good, my family is good, then. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. And that, that mom figure in your life was, how was the parenting when it came to your the sports? Like, were they supportive of this or were they more traditional where they probably wanted you to go to college, but they wanted you to get a job, get a, you know, actual nine to five. How was, how was that with them? So my mom, she was really like hands off. Like she didn't check my grades. Wow. Um, but she was a big supporter in everything that I did. Um, but I made sure I was always on the honor rolls. I made sure that, you know, I was always doing the right thing because you really get one shot at it. You know what I'm saying? Especially like as a black man in America, you get one shot mm -hmm. at chasing your dreams. You know, I feel Facts. like if you were to get in trouble, then boom, it's like, like, NFL was off the table, especially coming from this state. They look, they look at your, like, the smallest thing is off the table. You have bad grades, uh, no offer, then you're stuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, like, you get arrested or whatever. Yeah. Offers off back, the table. Back, uh, bad yeah. record or something. Or exactly, whatever. stuff like that. So, for me, I was very, like, on my stuff. And um, what was the question, guys? I lost so, track. Uh, <laughs> so, was she supportive? Like, yeah. did she ever be like, you know, Queedy, I want you to do this or do that? Or was it just, like... You're doing your thing, and she just supports you. Oh, go yeah. go have fun. Do your thing. Yeah, so she was very supportive of me. And then, like, for me, like, going to high school as well. Yeah. Um, She wanted me to go to classical down the street. Oh, wow. it was a good good school, but it was for free. Yeah, and it was right there. And it was right there. I'm like, nah, I can't. I got to go to Hendrickin. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to go to Hendrickin. You know, they went there every single year to get a lot of recognition. You know, they've sent a couple people. D1. Yeah. Um, they have a good track record yeah, when it comes to transitioning yeah. from – High school to the NFL. Yeah, so I was like, nah, I got to go there. But she was like, it's, it's expensive, you know. I don't, I don't really have the money to send you there. Yeah. I'm like, man, like, if you do this for me, like. It'll pay off. Yeah, it'll pay off. And she trusted me. She was like, all right, bet. She started working, like, three jobs, bro. She started working three jobs, send me the hundred uh, grand. And then from there, like, that's what she's a big supporter. Like, most parents, like, if, if a 12-year-old kid came up to you, like, hey, if you send me here or whatever, I promise you it's going to be a good investment. Yeah, down the road, parents are gonna be like, like, yeah, right, you know. Yeah, what I'm boy, saying? you just but go to you just go to any school or go to the freest school, like yeah, you know. Exactly, yeah. So like, my mom was really just like, all right, bet I'm gonna trust you, whatever. Wow. So to the school, and then from there, like, her, hey, her, did her, she know like you you were that good, like, like in football, yeah. and like, yeah, because like I would always you would like, tell her like about all your games and all like the passion you had for football. Yeah, so she would come to all of our games, and she would just see, like, I would always score touchdowns. I was always, like, the star of the team. So she was, she always knew I was good at sports. Yeah. And then I had to, like, really convince her, like, if you send me here, I promise you, like, I'm going to get a scholarship. I'm going to get a free education. Like, we're going to be good. Yeah, you showed that passion. Yeah, exactly. And that was, that was her biggest investment because now she, wow. she chilling. She, she retired at, like, 40. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, most people, they don't retire until, like, they're – 60 whatever they're paying off loans or whatever stuff like that but she she said oh no that's that's amazing man i remember when i saw that that because you it was like um like a partnership with um uh state was a state forum no a uh, rocket mortgage rocket mortgage the yeah. rocket mortgage mor mortgage moment and and so but that house does does she did, did everyone have to like kind of relocate to like where your uh actual team is or like or is, do you still have her here yeah so so she's still here i just moved there like away from like where because like we lived right off of broad street yeah and uh uh lockwood project so yeah. i'm like she can't stay here no more no like, no, 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 I, no no i gotta <laughs> no 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 <laughs> We got to we got to yeah, move mama up yeah, man pack you know up, pack up That's everything. amazing Let, let's go so I, I moved her out of there but she's still here because my younger brother goes to Hendrickson so I think she wants him to finish up there he has two more years left finish yeah. up there before she moves Wow Do you play football too or? Yeah uh, Wow. Yeah, I play football as well Nice yeah. Wow No that's amazing man it's that full circle moment mm -hmm. you know so young 23 years old changing your life changing your mother's life coming from the smallest thing in the country and it wasn't overnight either. You really put the work in. Yeah. 
you really put the work in? Does it feel like it's paid off so far, or do you feel like you still got any chips on your shoulder, something else to prove? I think personal stuff is what I like want to chase now. Before, what I was chasing was to take care of the family, which I've done. Now it's more like me stuff. Like I want to yeah. like get ten sacks this season. Yeah, I want to you know uh, make all pro. I want to want to do like I want to get a lot more award like not just personal stuff like for the team you know like yeah being a big contributor for my team you know to be able to push us to go to make it far um mm-hmm. into playoffs and eventually a super bowl and stuff like that that's amazing i mean what was your was it what was your ending uh season record last year again for the colts i forgot like that last year like once the season was <laughs> over I, you erased I, it yeah i erased it bro because we we missed the playoffs yeah our last game so once the season was over i just Listen, out of there. No, I hope that, you know, next year and these years going forward, when it comes to being in a league, I wish you so much success, bro. You really have a really good energy, and it's not forced. It's not fake. You seem to just be you, and it's got you to the point that you are right now. So I commend you for it because a lot of people, they see the lights, and, you know, it makes them turn into another whole person. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. have you experienced that? Did you, did you see that firsthand, like people, like, oh, switching up around you or people yeah. in your – yeah. I think for me, like, um, once once you make it to, like, a certain status in life, people want to treat you different. Facts. And for me, I'm the same guy, bro. Like, if you spoke with me now, spoke with me, like, in high school, I'm the same person. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a real quiet guy. I'm a real chill guy. I mind my business, stuff like that. But now, like, uh, you know, relationships have changed because now I'm in this position. Like, people start asking me for stuff. I'm like. Like it makes me uncomfortable and whatnot. Um, yeah, and um, people just start acting different around you. Like, like I know a lot of people, but then people are start saying like, "Man, that's my cousin, bro. That's my best friend." I'm like, "I, I don't even know you like that." I grew. <laughs> like, I swear, oh my! Bro. I would imagine watching the game with, with the boys and shit. You know, I grew up with that guy. <laughs> you grew up with him. You might have knew of him, but I don't think you grew up with him. Let's stop the cap. You know. Yeah. You listening like, to the cat podcast? We got you got to stop the cat. <laughs> I sacked that guy. Yeah, I you know I, I, I used sacked him when he was in middle school. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you capping, bro? What's going on? <laughs> or like, or like, I'll run into somebody and then they'll be like, "Yo, I I met your boy when I was back in uh, somewhere, or whatever." He was saying like he grew up with you, or whatever. I'm like, who? And they're like, so, uh, I'm like, who, I never who, met the guy. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, clout's a hell of a drug. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is, you know, because online with social media now. We've interpreted it as clout, things that people do, but that's always existed in real life. People, you know, gossiping, communities, neighborhoods, like, oh, I knew him, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're exaggerating a bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but hey, I might might cap a little after this. I might be like, (laughs) you know, I interviewed NFL player last week. Yeah, he's from Providence, you know what I'm saying? Bro, you are. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. It wouldn't be capping, you know, you know. I was just. I think it's cool though when like people. I feel like people have a lot of pride, like saying like, "Oh, he's from Providence." Like, like I knew him. We went to the same stuff. So I feel like yeah. I understand in that sense. Yeah. But then like once you say like, "Oh man," like we were like super personal, close, yeah. yeah, personal stuff like that. That's why I'm like, all right. But yeah. like I, f- I like I, I like when Providence is like behind my back. Like if you Facts. see like on my on my Twitter, like whatever, like I'm always shouting out like, man, like Providence 401 stand up, like stuff like that. You're proud of where you're from. Yeah, I'm proud. And like a lot of people make fun of it, like outside of Rhode Island, but I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like I'm from, like I grew up in that state, so so I'm a rep it. You are where you are, man. You can never change that. And also shout out to Kenny, my boy, Kenny Yeboah. Yeah. I'm not capping when I'm saying this. I grew up with him. Shout out to Kenny, you know, yeah. playing for the Jets. More Providence, yeah. Man, shout out to Kenny, man. It, that's That was amazing to see as well. And I saw that you guys had that moment that went viral, you know. And I still got that clip in my phone of, like, talking about, I think, who was it? With, like, a coordinator that was asking, like. Um, yeah, it was, our, it was our special teams coach. Yeah, and he was asking, like, uh, what, uh, what did he say? What was the, what the question? Where's Rhode Island or something like that? Um, You guys from like, Rhode Island? Um, he was, like, uh. You were like, I think I uh, How do you know this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, four hundred one, stand up. Four hundred one, stand up. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's so beautiful to see. Like, especially with the NFL professional quality cameras and that that moment, two players connecting, you know, facing each other but still showing each other love and representing where they're from, being prideful of where they're from, not hiding it. A lot of people hide it. They'll be like, I'm from New York. I'm from Boston. When you're really from Rhode Island, yeah. like, oh, I'm from New England. 
you're from Rhode Island. Yeah. And it's okay. okay. Smallest state in the country, but use that as a badge of honor because it doesn't limit you. Look at this man sitting beside me. Look what he's accomplished. Like, that's another thing. Give give a message if you had to say to one person, you know, as say specifically a kid that's looking at you, you made it to NFL, and they're where you were. Literally from Providence, Rhode Island, still living in the south of Providence. Mother might be struggling, family struggling, but he still has this passion yeah. to be you or be like you, professional football player. What would you say to them? What's your advice? I think for me, just be intentional of everything that you do. Um, you want to make it to the NFL. I don't see so many great athletes in the state balling in high school. They should be getting offers, but the grades aren't good. So, mm-hmm. like I said before, you know, you get one one shot at it. The grades don't don't go well, and then they go to prep school, and then prep school doesn't work out, and then next thing you know, they're back in Rhode Island. So, just be intentional. Like, if you say you want to actually make it far in something, like, put all your effort into it, like. Like, for me, bro, like, when, when people ask me, like, how focused were you? I didn't have a – I never had a girlfriend in my life. Wow. Like, yeah, like, once so all boys high school, college, was focused on school and football. Facts. Finally got drafted. Now I just started – Dating. Dating and stuff like that because I was so focused on, yeah. like – You didn't want – I, I, yeah. I don't want any distractions. Like, yeah. I want to be very intentional, like, what I – have to do like I I don't I don't want to I I don't want to slip up because you get one shot at it yeah girl yeah. like you get one shot I'm just like this is my only, I can't fuck this up so no like if I felt like I don't been through hella talking stages and stuff like that but if I felt like it was weighing on me who who uh, taught you that quality of just like um just being like hyper focused like that and just I think for me it was just kind of like um I think I taught myself really like yeah. I see my mom work hard and like when you see like your your loved ones like go through hard times or whatever, like, you're just like, I want to make sure that I take care of them. So for me, it was just like, I can't be fake hustling. I can't be fake grinding, like, work out here and there. and then Put that pressure on yourself. Yeah, yeah, so I put a lot of pressure on myself. I was, like, stressed out, like, depressed. I'm just like, bro, like, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself because I'm like, I have to take care of my family. But, yeah, you know, once once you're able to do it, then it's like like a big sigh of relief. Yeah. Finally, like, I can... Well, that's amazing, bro. Chill. And yeah. I feel like, and you don't have to answer this question if you feel like it, but I listened to the like the Kendrick Lamar album, and there was so much talks about fatherhood and like the impact of the father and me now being a father, as well having my child. I'm like, yo, this this is this is real life. Like the impact that a father has on their child can really shape them for who they become in the future. When it comes to your situation, did you have a father? Was it was there a fatherhood role that, you know, because typically that's what you you tend to see where it's like, oh, I saw my father play football or my father took me to play football and now I'm playing football in the league. What was your situation? So for me, I was relied on my mom for everything. Yeah. So my dad, uh, biological dad, is in Africa still. So when we came over. Liberia? Yeah. When we came over to America, it was during a civil war. Wow. And he just so happened to get trapped back there. So I never met him before. My older brother met him this past year, but wow. I never met him. So we came here, grew up. I was always a mama's boy, stuck with my mom. So I always, I always had her ideology. Wow. I always, anything that she told me, I always make sure I put it in the back of my head. Like I made sure I always re- remembered it. So she really raised me to be the man that I am yeah. today. You know, She's a superhero. So, yeah, superhero. So um, for me, like my mom was my everything. Wow. And now, do you have any plans of maybe visiting your father especially now because like it's capable like a flight i'm pretty sure you know humbly it's like affordable to you if you were to want to make that happen like what is your mindset now with that i think for me i definitely want to go back to liberia to give back to my people yeah and then if if i just happen to meet him then i meet him but i'm not like seeking it seeking it you know because i'm already a grown man like yeah i'm not really seeking like a yeah like a relationship in a sense but you know, I'm like, like I would love to like meet him, just meet him for the yeah. first time, whatever. But, but you don't have like, or do you have like some sort of like, not disdain, but like, uh, like he wasn't around, but then the situation, the circumstance is like you understand it as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand it, but it is what it is. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I respect, I respect it. We don't gotta talk too much about it. Dude, That's amazing, Doctor Phil, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's that Kendrick. It's that Kendrick album, bro. You listen to Kendrick. <laughs> Boy, deep diving, yo. Bro, Kendrick Lamar, he was talking about fatherhood. I'm like, yo. Uh, yeah. Yo. Yeah. No, I, I get that. Because I, I, I see like, it. Like, with fathers, I feel like fathers, like, they get forgotten about. 
like when you see like a kid like it could be like a kid that got raised by his mom and his dad but then when he grows up like man i'm doing shit for my mom bro like, i'm yeah. trying to take care of my yeah, mom yeah no, it's true and yeah. the dad gets forgotten about bro <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Yeah. It's true because of what? That's Maybe true. dad's, oh, buy him a nice car. My dad always tells me, oh, I want a nice car, but it's like... Low key, you can maybe lease it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 buy your mom one, at least one for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's Pay it, half. You know? <laughs> but like the mothers is it's it, that that's amazing though. You know, appreciate you even sharing that, you know, even opening up at all. You know, I'm really grateful. That's you know, you didn't have to. Um but yeah, man, uh, to end it, let's talk about just some quick, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but just some fun stuff. Who is your favorite artist of all time? My favorite artist of all time, I got to say J. Cole. J. Cole, wow, J. Cole, okay. Yeah. Wow. Like, like, there'll be like, like, there'll be like some, like, weeks or like months where like, I'll just play like a 24, 24 to the drive, like, wow. morning I'll wake up, bump it. And I bump music at 24, 7, like, I'll play it throughout the day when I go to sleep. Just music playing. I wake up, music playing, like, 24-7. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just bump the same stuff over and over That's again. That's crazy. But then I started bumping Kendrick a lot. Yeah. I started bumping Kendrick a lot during COVID because we were just locked in the crib. Yeah. And, and high school, I didn't really mess with Kendrick as much. But then I feel like his music was appropriate for that the time. For that time. Right, yes. Yeah, with, like, all the protests and stuff going on. Yes. I started bumping Kendrick a lot more. Um, And then I would say Jay-Z. Mm. Sorry, bumping the blueprint, um, and then Kanye. I feel like once like these documentaries start coming out, then like I gotta go listen to you his revisit shit, it. Yeah, go yeah. play shit from long time ago. Start playing his shit again, but I feel like yeah, no, I feel like Cole's the one. Yeah. Have you ever you haven't met him yet, or like I been around? Never. So no? I've never been to a concert before, but if I go to a concert, it'll be a J Cole concert. Um, wow, you've like never been to a concert before in either. My life, never. Wow. wow, this guy's very like. Focused, like he he's determined, bro. Like like you, yeah. I love I love that though because it's like you really were, you can tell by your energy. I feel like that you are, you just got, this guy. This guy's laughing. He thinks I'm Doctor <laughs> Phil, but I'm being honest. It's like this guy's energy is very like balanced. He knows what he's doing in his life. He's not forcing. He's not faking the funk. And we, we, you, he's being you honest. Consider here. yourself like a homebody. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a homebody. Bro. Homebody. Like, I'm I'm a home. Like after practice, I'll go back to the crib. I'll like watch a whole series of a TV show in one day. Like finish it. What's your favorite show? You watch Peaky Blinders right now. Right hold now. On, hold on. I Have you watch Peaky Blinders. Not bro? yet. No. Nah, nah, Don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> I'm trying to put him on stop. Peaky Blinders. You're acting bro. like they're paying you for this. <laughs> like you gotta stop it. It's been five years already. We're, I'm not watching it. What's your favorite show right now? My favorite show right now. I feel like I bounce around so many. So, like, I finished Snowfall. Mm. People telling me don't watch the fifth season because they said the fifth season was. It's not um, too good, but I would say watch it if you got to watch the sixth. Because the last one, the sixth one that's coming up is going to be what's phenomenal. What's Snowfall about? Cocaine? Snowfall. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how'd you, how'd you know? Oh, snow. The snow. I just started watching Narcos, like, two episodes. And I'm like, yo, this show it's is crazy. crazy. No, it's yeah, crazy. Narcos is crazy. Narcos yeah, is yeah, crazy. Uh, Stranger Things, I just blew through that. Yeah, they got the new season coming. Yeah. That shit's going to be crazy. Well, Peaky Blinders is good. I'm just saying, Stop bro. it with the Peaky Bet. Blinders. <laughs> Bet, I'm, I'm going to check them out. Stranger <laughs> Things, like, they blew a mad, I think, like, $30 million per episode this new season. Like, it's very expensive. Like, Netflix's most expensive show. Like, this new season is going to be crazy. But how about, like, all time, like, shows, like, that you've, the they best one that you watched? I like, for me, it's Breaking Bad all time. I fuck with Dexter a lot. Oh, really? Dexter. I've always, I haven't watched it yet. I always heard about it, though. Yeah. A lot of seasons. Yeah. Is that, like, they brought uh, it hospital? back, too. It's like he's a um, nurse. No, he's uh, uh, like a detective, but he's like a blood spatter um, detective. So like, oh, is this like a cartoon? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Uh, That's Dexter's laboratory. No, 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 no. (laughs) Jesus Christ. No, I'm not (laughs) talking about (laughs) Dexter's laboratory. (laughs) Oh my god! Yeah, he's like he's like a blood spatter like analyst. Where like he'll come onto crime season, like he'll tell them. How the how the crime like occurred like where he hit yeah. him from with like what object and stuff like he that. he has that oh, that that, okay. that skill I that I skill I forgot what it's called this yeah. is fancy well, word he just happened to be a serial killer as he's doing it as well yes but oh, he only okay. kills like bad people it's like a slim guy with a beard uh g- ginger beard ginger beard yeah, yeah. yeah I remember yeah how about movies like what's your what's your favorite movie right now that you watched like recently recently 
I fuck with uh, King Richard. Yeah. I, I fuck with that. Movie. I watched. I watched it late. I watched it like after the wars and everything. Yeah. Because I because people were like, had that theory like <laughs> like uh he's playing that player right there like he <laughs> tapped into it and I'm like I gotta watch this movie. He's still in character. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of. I kind of felt like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> it was arguable. I'm yeah, not saying he was. I think he, yeah. you know, he's a traumatized man. He's gone through a lot, you know, as one would at well, his that stage. That role definitely hit him, man. But that role was good. And he hit somebody off. Of <laughs> <laughs> but how about all time now? All time movie. Did you all watch the new Batman, by the way? That shit was so. That shit was crazy. So when I watched that movie, it was, I watched it out in Cali. And they had like this special theater where it was like, the, like Adobe theater or whatever. Mm. Where like the screen would like go like super in depth. Oh, and wow. the sound traveled, and like you can feel like the breeze, like when he was whipping the car or what? whatever. It was like the yeah. best. It's called the Adobe Theater. Yeah, like 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 they got those in L.A., yeah. New York. I've never heard. Vegas, of it. It was crazy, bro, wild. But like watching on now, I'm like I can't watch a movie outside of like that theater again. <gasps> That's how we felt. We went to see uh, that. I think Batman at X Plus. There's a yeah. theater out here. It wasn't that crazy, but it was still crazy. The sound was like bouncing. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah. It, was dope. it was a next level you think experience. It's the best Batman. For me, I like the I like the um, Dark the Knight. Dark Knight Rises with with Bane. That's my oh, favorite. Oh, Rises one, but, with Bane. But people like the one with Joker. Yeah, I like yeah. the I feel like the one with Joker has more iconic scenes in it. Yeah, I feel like with the with the, the Bane, Bane one? one for some reason. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I think that, yeah. I I don't th- I don't think it topped um, the Dark Knight trilogy, but it was really good though. Mm. It was really good. I was telling <laughs> when you when we were watching it after no after we watched I wasn't being annoying. I was like this is definitely like our eight like an eight eight and a half. To nah, I, I, I don't it was a good movie, man. We could, we could debate it. Movie. We could debate it all day. We could debate it what all day. You, what would you give it, bro? Do you rate I movies? Think, Are you that? I think I think I would give it like a like a nine and a half out of ten. Uh, you liked it. That's like what that, I would say. Uh, Same yeah. thing. What's your favorite movie of all time, though? All time. Um, I'm thinking of movies that like, I watched like a hundred times growing up. I watched like Friday Night Lights, the movie. Well, uh, mm. movie my life. I love that movie. Um, Gridiron Gang, like like football. Wow, movie. football classic with, football movies. I fucked with um, American Gangster with uh, Denzel mm. Washington. That's a that's a that's just crazy. Movie. Yeah. How about your favorite album, like all time? Because you is it a J Cole album? Because I know you said J Cole yeah. your favorite. Yeah, I think it's it's twenty fourteen, twenty fourteen. Four Hills Drive. Yeah. It's such like, a good album. Yeah, I feel like such that, a good album. That album, like it just brings me back to like when I was like taking a city bus to go to high school every day. Like, <laughs> I would bump that every day, like, and I was telling somebody, I had this conversation a, a little while ago, where, yeah. like, you ever listen to music? Yeah, it brings you back to a memory. It brings you back to, like, a specific memory, like, man, like, yeah. Yeah. it's crazy, bro. It's crazy, but yeah. that's what, I think that's the power of music, is, like, especially if you listen to it when it's out, like, it becomes time caps, uh, capsule pieces, like, yeah. you'll remember where you were, yeah. you remember what happened, like, yeah, yeah, what things yeah. smelled like, like, specific shit like that, and... It makes you like nostalgia is powerful. Like you remember that shit, and you can always revisit it and get that moment again. Yeah. Revisit that same moment. But that okay, that's a good ass album though. I can't I can't blame it on on blame you for that. Like, cause some people I don't know, but I don't know what people kind of expect. We are he's young like me. We are a younger generation where we're not gonna typically answer the Illmatic or like the Blueprint or. Yeah, I feel like that's you know. That's a weird thing. I mean, yeah. like it's 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 good it's good albums. Though. Like I fuck with it heavy, but it's just like. It's a new generation. That's something I would I would listen to like every day at twenty fourteen. Do you keep up to date to like the newer releases? Like, are you listening to Little Baby and like these people that drop, or not I really much? It's it's too much music going on. Like, yeah, like I can't keep up with. It. So that's I, why I you asked about Jack Harlow earlier. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I I can only like bump like the people that like I actually like. Yeah. So you know Kendrick dropped his stuff. I played Kendrick stuff once he dropped it like twenty times. Like off like I yeah. replayed it, replayed it, replayed it, stuff like that. But like I feel like there's too many. Artists out right now where yeah. I feel like I have to listen to everything, but I can't. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. You know, I do it for I a living. With, like <laughs> I fuck with low key artists too, like uh, artists that like people don't really hear about. Like you know, how, like on the Apple um, app, where like when you go through a whole album or like a song, or whatever, it just automatically popular. like yeah, just play new songs. And I'll just let that run. I'll just listen to songs I never heard before. Yeah. Just oh wow. Add it to playlists. Like start fucking with new artists and stuff. Like That's that. amazing. Yeah. So, what's your go-to like when it comes to like you're about to prep for a game? You're in the locker room. What's what is that? Playlist? What is like? Yeah. What's your playlist like? like what are you playing? Is it I think J for Cole? Me, like, so J Cole sprinkled in there, but like my playlist is more of like a calm mm. playlist where like I'm just in the locker room chilling. Yeah. A lot of people listen to like 
shit that will bump, like get them hype. Them hype. Yeah. But I feel like that that just tires you. Mom out. spaghetti, yeah. knees weak, arms are ready. <laughs> But don't you need it at certain times. So. Yeah, like, like, Depending. like, I feel like right before you go out the tunnel, you can start yeah. bumping that. But, like, in the morning, like, once I wake up, I'll bump some chill stuff. I'm taking a shower. I'm getting ready. Put on my fit. You know, I'm walking through the tunnel, chill stuff, warming up, chill. And then right before you go out, then you'll play, like, some, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like some tough shit. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I agree. And he might just be a silent killer. Some people like that. <laughs> like David Goggins. Know, like David Goggins. <laughs> like there's people out there in the world, they, they, they just fuck with that, you know, just like chill vibe. And then when there's time to show up, they're there. You know, they don't need to fucking listen to murderous sounds by <laughs> freaking Eminem or whoever, you know. I used to like be that guy where I had to play like, like I'll play like fucking uh, Casanova where just like. Woo! Yeah, but then. <laughs> But then Free Casanova. <laughs> God go. damn. And DNA like, or some yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and then, like, my boy was like, nah, bro, I play classical music pregame. It's like classical music. This guy listens to classical I music. Like classical yeah, music. and then, like, he was just like, yeah, put people, like, in the, in, in the right headspace, bro. You go out there, like, because, like, once you go out there, like, people would say, like, after the first hit or whatever, then, like, then you just chill out, then, like, you're playing the game. But yeah. I'm going into games now where I'm not nervous at all. Like I'm, but at first of, you were. Yeah, at first I was because I was like jittery. I was like I was ready yeah. to get out there. Yeah, I play the chill music. I'm j- I just go out there. And I just I just play the game. I'm I, I haven't been nervous since like junior year of college. Wow, yeah. no, that's, that's that's dope. That's dope as hell because shit. I don't know how I would be. I fucking be shitting bricks, especially like opposing teams, bro. And they're like they're yelling at you and booing you, this and that. I would just start swearing, going crazy. Your mom, like, I'll start. I'll have make breakdown moments, like how uh, these NFL, uh, NBA players have been having recently. Like Kyrie had it; he just gave people the finger and this and that. Yeah. Like uh, sometimes, like you, you know. I feel like it's more tough for basketball too because, like, they're right they, there. they right there, like right they can there. touch you. For football, they're more like they're up in the, in the stands. stands stuff yeah. like, so like. You can kind of hear him, but you can only hear him like when you're going through the tunnel to go back to your locker room. Wow, I never thought of that. That's, that's, that's true. That's crazy. What's your prediction for this uh, this season? How do you see yourself, the Colts going? How's it gonna go? What do you think? I think I think we'll ball the season, bro. I feel like we playoffs. Added, yeah, I think I think we'll make a deep run in the playoffs. Are they? Are you guys like an offensive team, defense, or are you like full think, with both? I think talents? we added some new pieces on offense. I feel like last year. Last year, we were definitely defense-heavy beginning of the year, but then our offense started balling. Jonathan Taylor started going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Started going crazy, started tilting that thing. But then our defense has always been a solid defense. Um, and then we added some key pieces. We took um, Stephon Gilmore. We added him to our defense. We added uh, Yannick Gok- uh, uh, Ngakwe, defensive end on the other side. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like our defense is coming together. But we always had a good defense. I feel like that's more important in football, right? The defense and then like yeah. clutch offense, like timely offense, or like it depends. Like I think it depends who you're playing. Like if you're playing like a, a high scoring team like the Chiefs or whatever, your offense gonna have to be following that game because the Chiefs are gonna get okay, twenty points homes. on the board right away. Yeah. You gotta keep up. You know I'm saying like if you play like Tom Brady and stuff, he's gonna get twenty points on the board. So the defense has to ball that game, but the offense has to bring their shit too. Like yeah, yeah, that's amazing. What do you see? When it comes to your future, like aside from football, do you have any other bigger aspirations? Like, do you want to, you know, maybe venture off into acting or like something else that you've seen other players that have been where you've been now become? So, like this off season, I had the opportunity to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So traveling, Arizona, LA, I'm going to a bunch of like these malls or whatever. They have a, lot, a bunch of boutique stores. You know, they have, like, a lot of streetwear in the store. Okay. Shoes, stuff like that. I think Rhode Island has, like, one. I think it might be in Cranston or whatever. But I would want to – people say it's bad to start a business in Rhode Island. Like, this is, like, the worst place to start a business. Yeah. But I feel like this is where I would want to – because, like, this is, like, my biggest following. A lot of people would support, stuff like that. So – Okay. I would want to get into fashion. I love shoes. Um, What's your favorite shoe of all time? Favorite sneaker? Retro one, retro one. Yeah, yeah. I think what, what colorway? Colorway. Uh, so my favorite one I have right now is the uh, Dior one. Mm. So that's like that's little like flex. My holy you know what I'm saying? Little that's flex. My whole, like like <laughs> in my in my room, it's like all the shoes in the shoe box, and then the, the Dior, Dior one right is there, like right there, like out the box. Besides one, what would you? 
Like fours, elevens. So you got eleven. So it was yeah. always, it's Jordans. Well, you said it. Like growing up, you loved yeah, Jordan yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So growing up, I was more of an Air Max guy because the Jordans was like I could never get them. It's expensive, yeah. Yeah, expensive. Um, I was more of an Air Max guy, but then once I started getting money to be able to buy shoes, the retro ones were there. This recent, this past year, that's when I started buying more different shoe. Before, yeah. like my rookie year, if you looked in my closet, it was only ones. Yeah, I had like forty pairs of ones. Damn. And then I started buying more of 11s. I got some 5s. And then I went to Michigan where we got retros. Mm. So we got Michigan PEs. We got the 4s, the 5s. And I got the Michigan 1s. You still got them? Yeah, I still got them. Yeah. You got to put those, like, yeah. on ice forever. So I just bought I bought my, my boys' pair. So I have one that oh. I, so I rock. I rock one of them. One's a rock, one's a stock. And I, yeah, I got one of them. Damn, so that's shit. smart. That's dope. Damn, because those P's, bro, those are yeah. one and done. That's crazy. What's your favorite, like, brand since you are into fashion and love the idea brand. of uh, doing a boutique? What's your favorite, like, so fashion I, brand? I work with Rude. I like Rude, Rude. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Rugi. Like He's a good designer. You met him yet or no? Oh, yeah, no. You can, you can make that happen. You can make that happen. Put it out there. Shout out to Rugi. That'll be dope. Um, but, yeah, I like more streetwear stuff. Like, before, mm-hmm. like, when you first get to the league, when you start getting money, then you're like, oh, I want to go buy I wanna go buy Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Mm-hmm. I want to go buy all this stuff. But then... I was just like, I don't even like some of this shit, bro. Like, I don't, be copy I don't, and paste. Yeah, I copy don't, and paste. I don't don't a lot that. of big brands are following. Yeah, so I started messing with more like the streetwear stuff, like the shorts, like the bravest shorts. Yeah, this like, is bravest studios. Yeah, yeah I've tried the bravest studios Custom New York. Mm, yeah, so and, and even like some pieces of like I try to support local brands or whatever. Yeah. Like, um, Phase is a Providence brand. Yeah, Phase official. Yeah, so I I got a bunch like their sweatsuit. I got a bunch of their stuff like. They don't know it, but I buy a bunch of their shirts. I got some of their hats. Wow. That's dope, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so like I, I try to support as much as I can. You know, if you have some dope clothing or whatever, um, people sign into my DMs, they'll, they'll like, show me, like, some of the stuff. If it's mm-hmm. dope, I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. If it's can't whatever. Can't be a napkin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it can't be the napkins. Don't send him no napkins. You guys be selling napkins. I don't know what's going on. Step your quality up. <laughs> We're from the smallest state in the country. We gotta step the quality up. We gotta act like we're an LA brand. Come on, guys, make us proud. But no, yeah, no, I, bro, no, I can see it, and I can help you tap into all that because at one point I definitely was the biggest plug in Rhode Island. That's like the main thing I did for money was resell. And my boy right now has a store, the biggest and most popular uh, reselling Sudi. reselling store. Shout to Sudi in the mall, Province Place Mall, Cured Collection. And oh, yeah, I haven't and, been back to Province Place Mall in like forever. Yeah, bro, I can put you on. He's there every day of the week, but, yeah, you can slide through, and I can even go with you if you need to one day or something when you're back in town. But, yeah, um, I love that, though, because I could you can make that happen. Like, yeah. that's that's a dope thing. Like, And I feel like it's necessary. We have some in the city. He's the main one, and he's successful because he knows his shit. Sudi knows his shit. And also, it's obviously in the Providence Place Mall. The location is really great, but... Aside from him, I really, I don't know. Like, I might be biased, but there's really nothing really impactful in the city. And you can be that because you have the name and you got the reputation and you got the investment. Uh, Financial-wise, revenue, you can make it happen and it can be done well. So if you ever do really do that, you know, you got my support with that shit. Definitely appreciate that. Yeah, man. But there we have it. Let's wrap it up. I don't want to keep you here too long. It's been an honor. I hope to have you here again, you know. This can even be a yearly thing because, you know, if COVID doesn't happen, the the seasons, the the regular, everything, the schedule is pretty much the same. So, you know, it's but been an like honor. COVID, like, not a thing anymore. Like, I hopped on the plane yesterday. Nobody wearing masks, masks no more. Don't say that, though. You might <laughs> you might have just jinxed it. Very limited, bro. You COVID might be a real thing. Say, let's not put it out there. It might be jinxed right when we walk out of here. We look at our phones. COVID outbreak, Rhode Island, uh, 2,000 people over over the weekend. I'm like, God no, I damn. Think, I think we're past that, actually, to be honest. I hope. I don't know. I hope. I hope. But what, any last words? This is your first podcast, first official, like, platform interview. Any last words you want to say to the people, your fans, your family, anyone, anything you want to say at all right now? I think really just for, like, the Providence people, man, like, or Rhode Island people in general. I keep, like, saying Providence. But yeah. I, I want to the state, the whole R.I., state. Yeah. Rhodey. Yes, sir. I just want to say, like, you know, just chase your dreams, bro. Like, be intentional, like I said before, of what you actually want to do. Don't do it for the cloud and stuff like that. It's fun to see now because there's more people getting offers. Like, before, like, it'd be once in a blue moon you see somebody get an offer. But now I'm seeing more offers on the table, more people 
you know, living out their dreams, going on the official visits, taking pictures and stuff. It's fun to see. So, you know, just be intentional, man. Just stay true to yourself. Don't get caught up in the cloud. Yeah. And just, you know what I'm saying? Like, just grind, you know. Don't don't fake grind. Don't don't post videos here and there. Uh, you know, you working out. Just just uh, make sure you're working, actually working hard. And, yeah. Yeah. We don't want to see no selfie videos with the <laughs> double R. Double R headrest on your behind you, like. Oh my god! <laughs> we get it. Calm down. Is that a filter or a real Rolls Royce? <laughs> we could care less. Just do your thing, bro. You know, be humble. You know, don't never forget where you came from. But you know, shout out to all the athletes from Rhode Island, especially those that have made it to the league. Jeremy Pena, David Duke, shout Kenny. David Duke, man. Kenny. You know, yeah. yeah. Shout out to everybody making it, man. It's a, uh, it's our time. Providence on the rise, and let's keep it manifesting that energy. And I appreciate you for coming through today. It's an honor, bro. It's love, you know. Um, yeah, and there we have it. CA Podcast Cap. They gonna love me for my ambition.